Good afternoon and welcome to the Hard Luck Show. I'm your certified, qualified West Side host, Steve Lucky Luciano. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, you have tuned in to the greatest show on earth. Coming at you from the virus bunker in Southern California today. Sitting across from me, my partner and co-host is Chumahan Bowen, American Indian, Southern Californian, elegant barbarian, bringing you new Native American music again. What about this? What is this? Ooh. The virus took on many shapes. The bear, the elk, the antelope. This is a fucking revolutionary the deer, shit. The mineral, the iron, the copper, the colt, and the rubber. This is about the coffee, the ooh. Cotton, the sugar. Taking down the establishment. The people, right? The people, the people, Mopping the floor with their fucking the heads after we chop them off. The what? Come on. Doesn't this just make you want to tear the shit down? The people. The people. The people. The people. Uh. Come on. That's right. That's right. And on sound. Sean Lewis, certified yeah. audio professional and yeah. engineer for the hard luck. Look. Oh. Show. Sh- 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 yeah. Show. Yeah. I like that. Woo-wee. You're right on point. Sh- oh, blue eyes. Blue eyes. Oh, blue, blue eyes. eyes. Man. Got the audio down. Oh, blue eyes, this man. Blue eyes, this Like Sinatra. Oh, blue eyes, this man. Yeah. Fucking Come blue eyes. He's in India. Fucking blue eyed devil. <laughs> He's a single father. Yeah. He takes care of the time. baby. Mr. Mom. <laughs> Mr. Mom. That was a good Mr. movie, Mr. Mom. By the way, yeah, yeah. That, if you want to watch Sean, watch Mr. You know, you can, you can just pay attention to Sean. Sean's a West Side. Yeah, Mr. we got Mom. um, we got, a, we got another guy to introduce. That's uh, it's a uh, part of the fam. Absolutely right. You know, a mainstay. The, a mainstay. What? If you don't know what that means, yeah, then what? you don't know that it's time for Big Capital O, Capital G. Where were you at when that came out, bro? Big lap. I, I was, was watching a Quentin Tarantino's down, movie. That's down. how young I am. <laughs> Woo-wee, motherfucker. Yeah. Represent Big LA, Lep. San Diego. Come on, Big Lap. All around the motherfucking side. Walk, one. Walk to Lep. the west. Come. Bunk all yeah. the way. Watch out for your heroin. heroin. Uh, Look out. He's going to steal yeah. your pockets uh, clean. No. <laughs> now he's got you sober and mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out, baby. Yeah. Got some San Diego love in the house. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's Diego right. We do. Yeah. We do. We do. Oh. We have a what? We have another family Come member. Come on, yeah, Woo-wee! another long time thirty-year friend of mine. Go. Yeah, Come on. our brother, our soul assassin brother down in Come San on. Diego, super talented, owner, tribal founder, gear. right, tribal of Tribal Gear, gear out of yeah. San Diego, Stop California. That Let's yeah. welcome him, right. Come on. Mr. Bobby Tribal. There you go. Look at Bob. Babo. Yo, Babo. Babo. Look at that. Look at that. Look at all these women that turn off their tops. Oh, They're no. They're shaking their titties. Look at all those yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Man. Hey, Woo. sit down back there. Hey. Hey. Hey, guy. Hey. Hey. Put your shirt hey. down. We don't want to see your hey. dick, dude. Hey, that, that one looked like you just had a mastectomy. Man. Put this shirt yeah. back on. That's crazy. That's hey, a lot man. of anxiety right there. You got pregnant moms. You got oh. stretch mark moms. Yeah, that's all right. They all put their we don't, we don't discriminate. Yeah. That's I right. don't care if your nipples are down Sexy. on your kneecaps. Sexy. Come on. Come on. Hey. 
Look at Bobby. Here he comes hey. in. He's moonwalking. How did he hey, know that? Hey, you can't moonwalk on carpet. Hey, they jumping off the. I never seen anybody do hey, that. They, hey, they jumping off the Coronado Bridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I never seen anything like that, man. We're making way. That's Make way. Welcome, up, uh, welcome, coming up from the south of the border, right there. Yeah. Welcome, He's Bobby. Down in San Diego, He's right by. Oh it, man, dog. what's cracking down there, Bobby? I'm a Diego man. What's up with Diego? Oh. What's up, Big S D? Chicano Bobby, Park. How was the drive up this morning? Easy, 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 easy. nice. You know, right up, right, right up the coast. You gotta get right up on that mic. That, 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 intro, that intro was doing a lot. Thank you for that. Yeah. You got that. You yeah. didn't know I could moonwalk, huh? Oh, I, I, I had heard, but I wasn't sure. I told you. I mean, there's a lot of rumors about your dance moves, I got and all of uh, it was pretty impressive because we have carpeting in in the studio, and then you're wearing sneakers. Like well, you don't, I don't have know any. How fle- he did it? How did you do that? You know why? Right. All these desk wasn't here. I'd start b-boying. Mm-hmm. Right. right. No. Exactly. Right. You know? right. Hell yeah. Absolutely. He did. It. He went from concrete to carpet and just kept a simple, consistent moonwalk the whole right. way in. Right. That's because Lepke's got a big giant uh, uh, magnet in his pocket and. Mm-hmm. Bob Bobby's got some, he's wearing a metal vest. And so yeah, he's just he's walking pulling, the other direction and pulls right. him through. Yep. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> man, I ain't seen Bob Big in a Bob. minute, man. Yeah. It's been How a while. How long has it been? How long, Bob? Uh, f- I don't. It's been a while. Has it like, been that long? I don't even know. Like the last time. No, I went down there, man. It was a while back when you had when you guys had the old spot. They were out of a, the old spot. It nah. used to be a bank, huh? Was that a bank? Because you had that oh, vault. armory it, it thing? Was, it was the yeah, armory. Yeah, the old spot. It was for armored cars. Right, right. It was, right. It was, it was, right. for the armored it cars. Was, it used there to be go. a Brinks yeah. warehouse. I went down there. there I pushed up in there with my son. He was just a baby. Now How long ago was that? Spot? Nah, dude. I've seen you since then. No, really? No, I don't think so. Because I went Maybe on a I bad think. mission. And then I remember I was in... De- Listen, I went to go detox when my mother died. I remember the words because the words always stayed in my head, man, what Bobby said. Because I had already... My mother had been dead for about a year, and I was in detox again trying to save my own life. And I got on the phone. Somebody told me, you know, hey, Bobby, you need to call Bobby, man. He wants to holler at you because I almost lost my life. So I got on the mm-hmm. phone. I talked to Bobby, and he goes, hey, bro. Uh, like, well, what's going on with you? I go, man, you know, my mom died. He was like, that was last year, homie. I mean, this is a year later, yeah. man. You need to like, let that go, Frank. You need to let that go, man. I always, had, you know, certain shit like Esteban and these dudes, put, with you. they put right. shit. And I always, re, you know, like rethink that. Yeah. And I think the growth process, and that was a while back, man. I remember that they was planted a, some hey, seeds in there. They planted hey, some hey, seeds. Hey, man. hey, Bobby, yeah. let me ask you a question. Big inspiration, Bob. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh-huh. Hey, so has Lipke changed at all? You've known him forever. Has <laughs> yeah. he changed at all? <laughs> has he fucking changed seen at me. all? He's seen me in the gutter. Don't lie. No, tell but the tell truth. the truth. Because like, cause when I, I know Lepke now. Right. Yeah. I, and, and I was telling Lepke, like, when you tell a story, bro, yeah. it's like looking in a funhouse mirror. This right. shit just bounces all around. We don't even get on track. Look at his face. He like he, can't, he loves it. He grins. He's Hell cheesy. yeah! I'm proud it. of him. Yeah, I'm, I'm so proud of man, this dude. I feel good, like man. I, I, I would have. They never back gave up. When I, when I was watching this whole hey, right. roller coaster ride right. um, up and uh, it was, it was definitely um, interesting to say the, the very least. Never what was the most up, interesting man. part? Do you got any funny uh, Lepke stories, Bobby? Go ahead. This, we're all family. Like, it's I just mean, us. Come Fred on. Durst from Limp Bizkit. Hey, no. can you let the man talk? <laughs> God damn. I mean, I, I, I was there mostly with the stuff that I, I was able to um, Anything experience. Funny? Just on a, uh, when I'd go down to SA Studios, I used yeah. to spend a lot of time time in L.A. between there and, and Risky's place and, you know, just, just being in L.A. And, and Lepke was always one of those dudes that, that would show up or he would already be there. And what you've seen <laughs> and some of the things that you saw, you know, that everybody saw in LA originals when he would just be fucked up. Right. right. But, um, you know, I, I don't, the, to me, the, what I would see was more interesting. And, and, uh, I don't know if I saw a lot of it as funny as other people saw it. What did you see? <clears throat> I saw right. a, I saw a real good dude that was in a in a bad situation, a right? Situation, right? And then when he would sober up, he was he had a lot of really intelligent things to say. He was a really really good dude, you know. Do you find that frustrating, Bobby? That you see somebody that has a lot of talent and has a lot of like uniqueness, Charisma. like real character, mm-hmm. charisma. And you're sitting there watching them wasting time. He's looking at Steve when he's saying that. Bobby, why are you looking at Steve when you say that? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Because on, I've, I've, I've seen Uh-oh. Steve. I've, I've seen him at the very yeah. bottom, and I always see, I've seen his, his ride, too. I've seen him be ultra-healthy buff guy. I've seen him rock bottom. Right. Know? And I've, I've always kept in touch with them, and I've tried to, 
to help as much as I could and be inspirational to them. But I, I love both these dudes, man. Like, mm. and and their stories are amazing. And it's, I think just just to talk about what's going on here a little bit. The, yeah. And I, I am a fan of your podcast. Are you? There's like Very get out of here. Like three or four right? podcasts that I that I listen to. I really, I was telling Lucky that I really enjoyed the Patrick one. Because Patrick oh, it. yeah, a fire. lot of a lot Very of what show. Patrick was, was saying good. and the pictures that Patrick was painting was like I was there, you know. I, I right. remember all that shit too. But um, no, nah, both these dudes, like I, I've seen them both, fucking what, what thirty inch waist, probably one hundred and twenty pounds, lucky one hundred and seventy pounds, yeah, yeah. What, but like. In, in, in bad shape, in but bad, then I've very seen, bad. Yeah, but then I've seen him pick himself up and and turn into like, you know, when you were working at Famous and you were doing, you know, the trade shows and shit, showing up right. like real, real put together and Chris. nice and and mis, you know handling his business like right. to see that transition was amazing to me and 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 just to see both these dudes, you know, Lepke being a great right. father now and yeah. and and, and getting good. my inspirational text. From him on right. a every daily, day. Every, every day, day. every day, every day. I'm on that I, list too. Every man. morning yeah. I get texts from Lepke. You know, the and minute you stop getting that text, you know something's up, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> you know, I think right. we're all we're all part of his program. Thank and, you, man. And, and, Thank you. You know, I I appreciate that, and and I see, uh, I see where where these guys have where they were and where they're at now, and and I've been blessed to experience Thanks, and, and be a part of the journey and have some real good time with with both these dudes and uh, you know what i got you know I, and i just because thank you bobby by right. the way. but you know you uh, you say this and i think it would be only fair for me to say to you and i'm gonna speak on behalf of lepke as well thank you is that <laughs> you could do me that. and him right have uh going through whatever choices or the um the uh we've 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 had to deal with the consequences of our choices right. this is our life Right? That's right. Can't cheat me out of my experience. Right. We ain't right. going to cheat Lepke or you or anybody out of theirs. Right. But what I want to say is I know that me and Lepke together always admired some people that were in this circle like the Estevans, like you, mm -hmm. um, that continued um, to work and grind consistently. Like you guys didn't have to like go away to prison, go away to treatment, go away to rehab, come back. Like from the get, you've always been working hard and taking care of your family and showing up for your responsibilities consistently. Mm -hmm. So I think I know I did. I look to people like you as uh, somebody that was, um, um, what's the word? Um, like, like stable. Like, you represent stability to me within the world that me and you move around. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's like kind of like you know, Muggs is another dude like that. That yeah. consistently shows up yeah. you know, together. And no matter, this shit's blown over, the fucking business went away, I'm going right. through divorce, whatever it is. Yeah. But they're still handling all the responsibilities. Listen, this is why uh, you and Paul are my partners. Right. Because you're that, you know, same guy. So... I've watched you do this, man. And this business that we're in, me and Bobby know each other mm -hmm. for close to 30 years. Where right. did you guys first meet? We, we, the first time we met was down in in San Diego. Used to be the the bigger trade shows, like, you know, there, there was a big trade show for surf and skate kind of okay. action sports, okay? Right. There was, there, they, they didn't have something for streetwear. Streetwear was something that I wasn't going to acknowledge. Okay. The big apparel companies, it didn't even exist. Right. So when they'd have these big shows for her, like, you know, Billabong, Quicksilver, like all these big. They, TNC. They, they would, exactly. They'd use the big <laughs> that fucking shit? convention yeah. centers in San Diego. Right. Well, these other brands that they really couldn't put a name to, that might have dealt with stuff like uh, graffiti and, and some break and. and maybe some tattoo art and like just different things that were more from a street culture perspective right from that had a little like hotel that was off to the side by two miles right and it was the sideshow and really we had to put our own sideshow on because you know and then slowly but surely there was started to become a stream of people right finding out more and more about this little show on the side mm -hmm. right. and that show eventually grew and that began to really turned into uh, what was looked at more as like this urban or you know you know it just it was a more streetwear cultured clothing right, right. 
Um, so we first met at a sideshow. Right. And it was, was us, I think, top to bottom, tribal, like third rail. Third rail, third rail. Risky Start off brand. Risk. Start off to risk. Echo came out of that show. Mm -hmm. for the first time Echo came out. I, first time Echo. Echo came yeah. out. Right. I think even like p people like um, Sucker or Mike was somewhere in the mix. Yep. So yep. was Lil Lucky mm. with 187 right. Buddha. And like, it was it was early. Con art was somewhere yep. in the mix. Stash and Futura. There was people coming in from New York. Right. That was the four thirty two F. Stash. Show. Yeah, four thirty two F. And I tell people if streetwear was born anywhere, it mm -hmm. was born, born at right the, there. Born right there at four thirty two. What year was? Hold on, hold on. It was. Whoa, and wait, wait. I think Jive was just coming around as well. Yeah, no, what is yeah, four, Jive? Jive, what? I think, was earlier. Jive is like he was. He was really at the forefront. Of what does four thirty two mean? What was that in reference to? That was the address of the building. That the was the address of the yeah. building. It was four thirty two F Street. The yep. first one was actually held in that building, which is now um, kind of a boutique hotel. Yeah, and then it moved to a produce warehouse um, from there, and then it moved again to another hotel to the St. James, mm -hmm. and then it moved from there so it kept bouncing around and the, and the founders of that were local dudes from san diego right and and lucky's right the reason that it came to be is the asr mm -hmm. um you know trade show action sports retail trade show with all the big surf and skate brands right they didn't know what the fuck to do with us mm -hmm. right they didn't they didn't know how to position us they didn't know what the first time i did it was in 92 when i did um well tribal did um asr and we came in and there was there was no streetwear there were, right. wasn't you know uh anything that represented the street cultures that that i'm from mm -hmm. that a lot of us are from you right. know like um you know skateboarding has always been a part of something that i've loved and i mm -hmm. i've i've liked to do but so has low riding mm -hmm. and you know so has tattoos and so has you know the whole hip hop scene but you know i was al always very and tribal as a brand, we've been real diverse, and we represent who we are and what we like and what we're into, and mm -hmm. you know, both our past and what we're currently involved in. Right. And I think that's important for any brand. So let's talk about this for a second. This is interesting to me because what you're saying is that 432, right? Everybody wasn't quite sure where to position. Multiple fat brands. brands like tribal or whatever else. These are kind of like streetwear things. Right. Now when you. They knew that they were somehow related to these kind of like sports, these sh this action sports kind of thing because it's involved the street, and then and it was Southern California, so that does involve the ocean. Mm -hmm. Yet somehow it wasn't quite surfing; it wasn't quite. Uh, you're right. You're absolutely right. Now, Juman, I'm not to cut you off, and I want to make I want to make a little sense of this. So go I'm ahead. Just gonna understand. Go ahead. You got to remember, we're talking about a Southern California marketplace vendors and this is when independent stores were raging out of control they were everywhere right so you're talking about very southern california look that that moved across the country but that was known that was what southern california was known for that look right right the surf present right so you got to remember as this is happening you this is a southern this is regional more regional type business right okay? you got to remember there's a national show going on in vegas that's been going on for years. It's the big apparel show. It's the magic Magic. Show, right? right. Magic's going on, but magic is recognizing. They're recognizing that there's another market besides that on a national level. But they don't know Southern California. They don't know really what we're doing. What right. they're paying attention to is this, what they've deemed urban market. Got and it. they proceed to open up brands like... Fubu and, and Rockaware and right. Fat Farm and like which have an African American kind absolutely. of shading to it, right? And these brands begin to, as this is going on right here. Yeah, in that world, those brands are starting to dominate. Right. Or they're not dominating, but they're starting to do large business. Right. Right. Like people like Levi's and others are like, dude, RP55, and they're looking at these huge. Co the companies that are now doing two, three hundred million dollars in right. business, big denim, and it's urban. Right. So the the concept, the higher concept was like things are changing and what the kids are wearing in America is changing. Right. But they really didn't have like a big eyeball on what, what was happening. It was being very East Coast driven. Shipping right. the East Coast was hot, had always been hot and kind of dominated. And then we got this little surf. The, the surf skatey Southern California and this thing is becoming to start to grow out of Southern California across the nation right but nobody has really seen streetwear what we're talking about so we're this little 
microcosm, if you want to call it, bubbling, yeah. right, in right. Southern California. But the rest of the commercial world isn't really paying attention to what's going on. Right, and they don't see that. And this thing's going through changes, right? For sure. So, like, so in the beginning, what did you? What was your initial impulse or in building? First of all, how did you pick the name Tribal? What does it represent to you? What was the thought as what Steve talked about? This nascent um, streetwear thing is starting to bubble and evolve on its own. Like, what did you? What was that thought process for you? I think in the beginning there wasn't. There were very few brands that I could relate to. You know, growing up as you know a Chicano and being into skateboarding and you know graffiti and tattoos, and right? The lifestyle and culture that that a lot of us, including you know probably all of us, experience here in Southern California, a little a little more right real to the streets and and you know things we were into. So, um, I mean, it could, we could do the long story. Short story. Is, long story. Uh, my, Why <laughs> tribal? All right. So, Why the fuck so tribal? this this is what's. So my brother and I um, grew up like slanging all kinds of different mm-hmm. products as right. kids, and we used to work the swap meets and things like that. And and we were um, actually the, the we had acquired a bunch of T-shirts that were blank, that were hot, and right. uh, and this and this dude had a shit ton of them, and we started slanging these these blank T-shirts. And at that time, my brother was designing tattoo flash for himself, and most of his tattoo flash that he was designing were Aztec Mayan inspired graphics, more Got hieroglyphics it. type stuff, stuff that he was getting tattooed and and I had a knowledge of graphic design from high school so I would um you know I would I studied graphic design for a couple years in high school and I knew about silk screening and things like that. And right. there was really nothing of that sort that was on t shirts at that time. Right. You know, and I did some graffiti and I had some hand styles and things like that. So we started you know, why don't we try to up the game a little bit and start printing some of your tattoo flash mm. and my hand styles on T-shirts and see if we can, instead of selling the shirts for, you know, five bucks or whatever we were selling for back then, we could sell them for 10 or 12. Right. So we did that. At the swap meets? No, no. We, we never sold, to this day, we've never sold tribal at the swap meets. We started selling it to our friends, to our neighbors, to our cousins, mm. to... Just people around us, like all these people that we knew, you know. And why and the name Tribal? The, because of what we were using was primarily my brother and I. That's what we, that was like, we sat around like, what are we going to call this? What are we going to tra- call this? And at that time, everything was basically tribal from Azteca, Mayan, right. Inca, like tribal style graphics. And then to take that a step further, you know, we all basically run in tribes. And right. This, this represents the tribe and the tribal. You know, people traditionally as, and, and you you know, I'm sure you're knowledgeable of this as well, is <laughs> yeah. have expressed themselves as tribes through their art and their dance and their, you know, their, their culture. Right. And so this was an expression of, of our tribe and, and the people that, that we've surrounded ourselves with. So it all kind of kind of came together but also during a little later um i went to san diego state and i was uh curating some art shows and at, around that time the like 1990 ni- 1990 1991 i was uh curating a show at the central in balbo park in la and i had started working with a lot of local graffiti writers and mm-hmm. that whole west coast style graffiti was relatively new out here. I mean, right. East Coast style, I'm sorry, like the mm-hmm. hip-hop That styles. was brought out. Yeah, yeah, the stuff that you would see in Hollywood, the stuff you would see Risky do and right. Dante and, you know, all these L.A. dudes, and you started seeing local cats in San Diego. Right, and, like, like Cell Dog and all that stuff. Y- that He was kind of <laughs> interpreting that that East Coast stuff and making a West Coast yeah, style, Yeah, or right? the early West Coast artists. Right, right, right. exactly, the, right. the WCA stuff. But there was also some dudes from San Diego that were – they were getting down, you know, sure. guys like Zodak and Dyes and, right. and a lot of these. It's like Frisco, these, just like, like yeah. it was popping it, 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 it was just beginning to birth. It, exactly. Southern, and and to me, California. it was like, it was probably, I'm sure it was, and, and I know it was around before then out here on the West Coast, but that's when it really caught my eye. And 
And I'm like, fuck, look at all these colors. Severe and all those guys. Yeah, right. yeah. like all these colors. Because I was used to seeing, you know, two color black, black letters. Gray. Right. Yeah, yeah. Silvers and right. blacks. Right. And, you know, just one color, you know, gang writing, neighborhood shit. Right. But this real colorful shit. And I was looking at the lines of it. I'm like, how the hell are they doing this? Right. Like, yeah. wow, this yeah. is, a, this is real cool. colorful. Yeah. And I started yeah. looking into it and doing some investigating. So. A lot of these artists that were from San Diego, I, I became friends with, mm -hmm. and um, and I started bringing them into to some of the shows that I was curating, and it was around that time, um, night right right before 1991, where um, I was curating a show at the San Diego Food Bank with graffiti artists and just you know different different type of uh, art, and I met Carl Ariano, mm -hmm. and yeah. C Carl, who's uh, you know I still had you know tribals had been alive for a couple years already and it my brother had kind of lost interest or or went in another direction and I, actually he was kind of on the same path right. that you guys mm -hmm. went on a little bit and mm. um and he uh you know joey's like always yeah. always yeah, been, yeah, yeah, been yeah, program yeah. Yeah. type of yeah, dude yeah, so absolutely. hey real quick why is it that you're the one that stayed focused i mean and let's not be modest about it let's just be honest like why why is Bobby able why you're Bobby tribal? Why yeah. Bobby? <laughs> Bobo. Why Bobo? Uh, why how is it what's the difference? What does it take to stay focused so that you don't go on a on a on a on a on a distracted path from success? I'll tell you what distracted or distracted. I'll, I'll tell you what, is if I was more focused than I am now, <laughs> it, the company would be like Hurley or, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, and I sure. would own it myself right. or, or, or Ruka or, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. I wouldn't be, yeah. I, that's one thing I never wanted to do too, is be owned by anybody else or telling, having anybody else tell me what to do. Right. But don't get it fucked up. I've been Bro. distracted. Don't get it fucked up. <laughs> if you can own, own, own me a cash for a hundred million, you can own, tell <laughs> no, me what right. to do. That too. <laughs> but, that too. But, but I, I've, I've had distractions, <clears throat> but um, I've also been very blessed and fortunate to have great people around me and people internationally to take a, an interest in the brand and, and, and have good, just a good support crew. But also, um, you know, I've, my, my wife, my kids, um, family. just family, right. you know, that, that kept me focused responsibility. And I love what I do, man. Like I really, I, every day, even to this day, mm -hmm. I get up and I'm like, fuck, I get to do this today. I get to work on this. I get right. to work with this dude. These guys are coming in. Those cool. guys are coming in. And yeah, but, but what, wait, hold on, hold on. What's the secret uh -oh. though? Because, because I understand everybody has a p part of themselves where they got distracted a little bit. Every, right. You're right. Right. Okay. Right. And everybody has response. There's a lot of people that got children and, and wives and they don't stay on the path. Right. Oh, okay, boom. so you step to the side for a minute or whatever. Yeah. What was the real difference for you? Was it that your wife like grabbed you by the collar and dragged you back? Or was it some friend of yours that whatever? Or was it just pure luck? What was it? I think I think, yeah, a lot of it has to do with my wife, dude. Like yeah. being knowing that I needed to to get home and I needed to support her and I needed not just her, my mm -hmm. kids. And I needed to, um, my parents, like I always wanted to make my, my parents proud of me too. Yeah. You know, um, I was just driven, but I think a lot, large, large part of it is too, is like I said earlier, I, I fucking enjoy what I do, man. And, right. and, and I do have a bit of competitiveness in me. Yeah. And, and, and there is some things where, but we had a fucking badass crew of people we got to trade show oh. with the joker dudes and the third Man. rail guys and sucker mike and us and we ran all that shit dog yeah, and, and and For and it sure. was it was a good time and back then there was no social media no. right so no, you show that. up at the show trade show and it's like let's see how that booth looks right. let's see yeah, what right. their let's see what right. their catalog looks like yeah. right. let's see how these guys are doing yeah, it could you could just pop some shit no, up and no, look at no. Like, huh? it took work well yeah. remember what, what bobby <laughs> hundreds was saying is he was saying that like uh, when he first started out him oh. and his buddy nobody even paid attention to their thing they didn't know who they were so they went and they covered it up because they want to create mystique or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, they covered their samples. Yeah. They covered yeah. their samples because they were trying to compete in this place where you're saying, like, let's look at each other's booths. Let's see. What was your first booth like? Was it was it the opposite. Like, <laughs> yeah. when, we, when we did ASR for the first time, we invited all the homies. We could get in. We could sneak in. We could open the back doors. Yeah, we were in ASR had never seen a fucking DJ at a, oh. 
at a trade show booth in 1992. They, they had never seen break no break dancing no break. in the front. Exactly. Yeah, break dancing That's what I was going to say. B boys all Come blocking on. the aisles yeah, and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Low rider right. bikes, low rider bicycles in the booth. Yeah, set up. You know, yeah. ethnic kids coming in that right. some of them looked, you know, you got. I got photos with the booyahs from right. 92. The booyahs. They, had a, they, had a, they had a line. Yeah, later on, that later line. on. That was... Penal uh, code. Yeah. Penal code, right. Yeah. They that got a line. Shout out yeah. to Gotti. So then, so then uh, you know, our approach was... That Gotti, Gotti gear, too. Shout Gotti out. Wear. They did a couple of they them. Did. They yeah. did a couple Shout of out. them. But, but uh -huh. um, that was also at the point where... ASR was like, well, you know, turn that shit down. You guys can't be blocking the yeah, I was like, somebody. Oh. Try, trying to trying to like, you know, salt our game. Right. But so then a couple years later, right. you know, we fast forward three or four years later, they were offering me the prime time spots because right. they yeah. knew that our booth would have rock stars and rappers right. Right. and b boys and yeah, DJ yeah. and it was all the hype. So like, hey, we're gonna we want to put you guys right here. I'm right. like, yeah, but I only want to buy two booths. Well, we're gonna give you two more. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, wow. yeah. But so it became that sort Damn. of thing. But at that same time, that's where 432F came in. They're like, Ooh. and it wasn't just us. You know, it's like that's when when uh, Gap was doing things. Sure, Louis from yeah, Gap yeah, was yeah, doing Louis. things and. I, that's when I met Risk in, in 92 at ASR. Mm -hmm. That's that's our 91, 92 when I first met Kelly. And since well, then. Third um, rail. Yeah. And that's, oh. you know, it was always with, with Joker, with third rail. No, we were doing uh, Not Guilty back then. Yeah. Not Guilty. Not guilty I, that's uh, Not Guilty and Supermax. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That yeah. was at the 432F, yep, the one yep. that was in the um, produce thing. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Me, me, that, yeah, bro, the produce part. Yeah. What, produce what year thing. was that? Oh, fuck, 92, 93? Man. It was, it was early. That was it, early. You know what? It had to have been 93, bro. Because right. 92, Back Supermax when you had... was open, and we went right. when we launched uh, Not Guilty, and that was 93. Right. Yeah. And that, that was a good time. There was, there was a lot of... Oh, yeah. a lot of um, and like I said, social media wasn't there to, wasn't right, to, yeah. to, you know, so when you showed up, you had to bring your A game right. and, oh, and, and yeah. be like, oh, okay, this is what... This is and we were still you. trying to figure it out. Yeah. yeah. Because... You would we see all some of these bigger brands. And then you got to remember, this is pre-computer. Right. right. So people aren't showing up. I mean, computers are starting to show up, but you're not seeing laptops at the shows. No. And pe no they're, they're, what's happening is they're showing you the line. Right. Yeah. Physically. Holding up the a line. Book. Okay. They're putting out right. shorts, putting out shorts. <laughs> and you're following along in a book. Yeah, with the an book. Order I remember that. Yeah. God damn. Order right. Like ordering right. carpet and then, or something. And then, and then like, you know... You would usually have to take <laughs> that yeah. catalog line sheet and order form up to your room that night so that you could write out the order. Yep. The next day, you drop off your orders downstairs at the booth. Then. You couldn't do it all there. There was no uh -huh. cell phone where you could just punch in Nothing. the fucking order. None of that shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, not that. Nothing like that. There might have been the, a fax machine. And then the other part is if they couldn't get you the order there, yeah. right in person, yeah, right. no problem. Because yeah. they're going to fax the order into you. So right. You get the fax, right? Right. Yeah. There was no... Like Fact. it wasn't like I'm gonna email you my order. No, nah, man, that yeah. shit. So it was that time, man. So we were and we were all learning. Like, okay, so do we make triplicate invoices and they get one, and then we this, yeah. and then like how many days lead time? Like we're learning all these. He's shit. right. We yeah. didn't have we're anybody that, that like, was showing us yeah, how to do right. our shit. We weren't a bunch of college. But we would show guys. each other though. Right. Yeah. We'd right. Share the we would. We would help each other right. out too. And you know, right. like also on like vendor shit and like. Hey, customers yeah, yeah customers trade everybody like was there back any, then people helped each other out was there any established uh brands i mean you don't have to say who they were but was there any established brands that were hating that were like they could see that there was some buzz coming for you guys and they were not interested in helping this you is a, the this fuck is off? A, they, well first oh. off this is years later yeah there did become some of that with like really? new booty motherfuckers that but back then, you got to remember, you got to remember, look at, yeah. back then, what you're saying, yeah, yeah, there was. I would it think so. No, it wasn't in our crew, though. Right. It was all the mainstream brands. That's what I'm saying. We're not, bro. Yeah. That, they tried to rob us of our brand. They tried to fuck us on our brand. They like, tried in what to ways? Like, what would they bite do? Bite our shit. Bite shit, bring you in and sign you a contract that you really couldn't fulfill. And then own half of the name. We when used you go to out. Hey, we uh, used to have to go would, down to the alley in warehouses where Esteban would tell me, "Hey, they got my shit in here, and they're marketing it like they're fucking stealing my still, shit." Right, right. We go. Go ahead. Look. But yeah, but all that. But 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 the big brands. None of those people would give you a phone number of a buyer. Right. For mm. a chain store. Right. Hell no. They they want you even coming around their booth. 
Right. Because so we were stuck trying to figure it out. And that whole business was very much like, hey, that on the shirt looks a little scary. You actually look a little scary. And so do your friends. Wow. <laughs> so wow. don't come near the booth. And we're yeah. not going to come right in. And we can't have that hanging in our store in the mall. Right. That's right. That's, right. that's going to make a message. kid smoke yeah. weed yeah. or right. shoot somebody. Or what is that? Right. right. Yeah. This was we voodoo. We were considered too taboo. <laughs> right. Not voodoo taboo. Yeah. We, we could, so we were only dealing with really, uh, and, and this is what goes back to like, uh, Thailand, Japan, places wow. like that. Those were the first people, and from my experience, the first people that ever gave a step on a cartoon a chance right. for artwork right. was Asia. Japan. What about right. you? So right. we would right. go, we right. were dealing with people, and we were right. getting people from England, Germany. But they years. were, we were meeting all these people, and they were intrigued. They didn't yeah. want the whitewash. They the like, bullshit. they'd have to yeah. do that, that for their shit. business, but right. what they wanted to do is they wanted to hang out with us. Right. So Bobby, they wanted us to fly out there. They right. wanted to know what's up with the street culture, all that. Yeah. So they're the ones supporting the brand. Right. We lived off of international business primarily. Yeah, so Bobby remember? Tribal, did yeah. you go to Japan? Sure. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's that's, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Kind of like, what was it like the first so, time you went to Japan? First time I, I went to Japan, I think it was 1994. Yeah. Um, we had met a, a group of Japanese people at, at the, um, the that I still work with to this day. Yeah. Because they're so... Like the, fine the loyalty, not uh, fine Satoshi triple, okay. triple C, triple C, yeah. Right. Right. So yeah. CCC. CCC, so um, Satoshi Furuya, that that's still my brother to this day. Like I love that. Right. His family's right. my family. His kids, our kids grew up together. It's it's really really a beautiful thing. Wow. Awesome. So um, it's like how me ni- and Esteban and Shaw, right? Yeah, right. Right. exactly. So in 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 ninety four, we they invited us out there to do a promo tour. Right. So on that tour, we took some uh, the Rocksteady kids, some B boys. We took the, yeah. The, we took right. the Beat Nuts from uh, from mm-hmm. New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We took this group called Born Americans. I mm-hmm. took Zodak, the graffiti writers. Yep. Zodak, yep. Rock Zodak. All this talent. Right. There was the the mm-hmm. first our first. We took some pro skaters, Kim yeah. Lu. Uh, John Reeves. So we put this whole cultural experience together. Right. And There's we, footage. They and, got footage. Yeah, it, 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 it's in the old tribal shirt. videos. I remember those. Yeah, that's footage. Those, first one. Dude, those yeah. tour shirts are with yeah. money now. Hey, so yeah. so, yeah. so let, tell me about that okay. ninety four. So so you're a curator from from way back, right? You've put together these shows. Right. You hook up with these Japanese people, and they're like, listen. This is amazing. Can you bring this experience over here? Yeah. And you're like, fuck yeah, I'm Bobby Tribal. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. right. That's how it went down. I know. I know yeah. how it went. I was a kid, man. Like, so you, you put it all together. So what happens the first time real Japanese experience this culture? Oh man, so they, they were, were all out of erection. <laughs> <laughs> what? The whole place. But and everybody but had a boner. They were. What? They what? were. We were all flipping out. They were flipping out on us because they were having a, a ball, like listening and watching these. B boys and watching dudes do graffiti and skateboard and and all this this culture that that we were bringing, right. but at the same time, we were tripping. We were all in Japan, you right? Know what I mean, right. the whole crew so was really in Japan, so we're like, damn. And and that type of tour we did about maybe fifteen times. Yeah. Like we ended up working with the, you know went out there with the Stevan on cartoon a bunch well, of times. Yeah, we did cycle realm. We did stuff. cycle realm because Esteban Esteban told us some stories about how like. He would do some shows out there with, uh, w- like, music shows or whatever, right? Mm. And he said that, like, the Japanese people at that time, right, they would, like, actually, they wouldn't necessarily dance because in their culture, yeah, they're polite. So did you experience sure. anything like I that did. where you were, like, they stayed within the yellow line and they didn't smoke? I did. I mean, in the beginning, more so. Right. But, but as time went on and they started becoming more cultured, like, when I we went out there with uh, Limp Bizkit and... Corn mm, and, yeah, and and different different larger bands. That's when you really started to see them opening up a bit. Mm. And one of the other things it that we would trip tribal out. tour, yeah, it right. was the called tri- the tribal. They tour. called it the tribal tour, and then right. he came up with really the idea, Bobby, and like different brands. Like we we got yep. involved and got on a tribal tour. Yeah, you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah, so I go like all these different people came together under this umbrella. The umbrella was the tribal tour, right? And he had all the venues and the people set up mm-hmm. to go over and be part of this tour. Yeah. And you could sell your product at this tour. Yeah, Joker like, was all was a part of, of the tours too. Shit. But right. there was there was some amazing stuff going on, man. And and it kept you know they would they were successful, so they kept kept happening over and over, and, and they would just kind of from a branding perspective. 
How fucking dope is it to have something called the Tribal Tour? Right. And you get to cure. I mean, how? How? I mean, from a branding perspective, you, that sets it up. You, you know? know what? And, and I was, I was probably Bobby much... wanted it to be fucking Lollapalooza. It never happened. <laughs> <laughs> Tribal Palooza. Never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never hey, said hey, never. I'll baby, tell you bro. what. COVID did fuck a couple things up. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know and also I mean? opened up an opportunity for a couple yeah. things. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. right. So, but is you that know, true, Bobby? Are we going to see? Wasn't... Are we going to ever see a uh, Tribal hand sanitizer? Um, <laughs> I don't. I, I, you know, I haven't. I haven't thought. <laughs> you squirted it. I can do it. Thought you about that. Out, it's black. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to do it? Look. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm telling okay. you right now. I got cli- one of my clients. My, one of my clients With actually. Glitter. Yeah. One of my clients. Yeah. One of my clients. Fucking their business wasn't doing so well. Yeah. And then um, they switched over to hand sanitizer when COVID hit. Now they're doing fucking. I'm, they're making so much money that they're trying to pay everyone off so they I'd, don't have. I'll tell pay. you what. Like not just for speaking for myself, but yeah. online business with COVID has been. Incredible, incredible, man! Wow. Like, it, and feeling super blessed, and and for all the love and support and sure. stuff like that. But so you, you know, were about to say though, I was asking you, how good is it for branding to have your own tour internationally and bring in all these different pieces? And you were about to set up and say, I, I was a kid, man. You know, I was like, I was in my mid twenties, you know, and and uh, it and Carl, you know, Carl was right there. Yeah, you know, we Carl, were, we're, Carl we're for doing the longest together. time. It's it so, was Bobby and Carl. Who's yeah, Carl? Yeah, Carl was he's a uh, he was my partner for twelve years. Okay, in the beginning, and because uh, he had a silkscreen company, so we became partner through you know his ability to to print shirts. And, right, and f- Carl, it would strike you just so you, the listeners understand, like when you met Bob, when you when you guys met Bobby. Bobby and Ben Hundreds. Yeah. So Bobby Hundreds is more the creative guy with, you know, you know. Right. That's more like how this Bobby would be. And then Ben was like more behind the scenes. Like he's right. Man, he's more technical guy. Right. And, and that was how Carl was. Carl was more like straight. Now, OK, yeah. we're gonna, I'll make sure this, this, this is done. Bobby was really the guy that was like brand manager. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. That guy. Right. Car- Carl. I love Carl to death. Like I just he was he was at the shop last week. We, we were actually Shout working out to on Carl. That's man. right. Always and then, yep. um, but Carl was way more laid back than Ben. Like Carl s- smoked a lot of weed. Right, he always yeah, has. I mean, you know yeah, what I mean? He was yeah. real chill. <laughs> Maybe that he, wasn't. He he, 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 <laughs> he, ba- he balanced me out a lot, and right. I always. Are you, you know, like an intense dude? Nah, I'm not. I'm not. But I mean, if he's I'm, laid back and he's balancing you, occasionally, out with- but occasionally, but I remember, like even being on some of these tours. Yeah. you know, if something we needed something or something going wrong. Um, I was I was kind of easy going too. That I remember Duke pulling me aside and go, "Hey, tell him you're you're Bobby Tribal. Go tell him, tell him what you need." I'm like, "Man, bro, I feel bad. Like you know, they already got us all out." But right. I, I wasn't. I, I I am occasionally I'm passive. Occasionally, yeah, I guess I I can be aggressive and and, and yeah, but it's you not know, get nature, what I want, bro. No, nah, it's not. Like yeah, these but, guys know me like that. Like I'm. No, nah, that's yeah. probably also like wh- he. he when you say like that, the company is not as big as Hurley. It was probably because reasons like that. Because yeah, you, you're more about. Listen, you've said to me. I'm gonna say it right now. There's, you're just a good. You got a good heart, bro. You're sometimes you're a little bit too good for the business, right? You know. Yeah, I've been okay. told. That. And we know that. But what I am gonna say is, you Chumahan have said to me uh, many times. You've got. You've said to me. You go, well, lucky. You know, it's you're, you're very political. Right, right. It's mm. it's politics. Right. At the end of the day, it's right. about relationships and how you move through these relationships. Exactly. Right? This is this is this is how Bobby is. Like you don't stay in the apparel business for thirty years, right? And everybody fucks with you. Like, right. there's really nobody that goes that you, Bobby, tribal company. These motherfuckers don't pay their bills. They fucking burn me. They stole my. Day. You never hear that. Bobby. Got it. But at the same time, he's able to talk like like rock stars, real rock stars. Right. All tribaled out. Right. Fucking at his swimming right. pool. Right. They're touring the fucking Tokyo. But then there's this, and then there's the lowrider community. He's involved in the art of Chicano art, and we're putting on a parade, and there's a restaurant over here, and we're there. there. It's like you to keep all of that going. Right. And this guy... That's a I'm lot of egos. That's I'm a fi- lot of egos. I'm 53, bro. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This guy ain't... He's, he's around there, too. This guy's still relevant with everything that's popping down there right now. Okay. There's some whole new part of, like, San Diego, where they have all these restaurants and cool people going and everything. Like, all right. I can already Bobby's hear... Bobby's all I can up already, in the mix with that shit. Like, 
Kids st- on the street know yeah. the fuck who he is today. All right, now listen. God damn it. Let's just cut the God shit. God damn it. Let's cut the <laughs> fucking Bob shit. Bob God damn it. So, Bobby. <laughs> And I'm serious. Hey, the salmon's rolling Hold on. The river. Yeah, hey, big yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, just trying to catch a fish. Listen, guys, listen, just, just don't bullshit. Hey, oh, hey. So, oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hey, wait a minute. You hold on, no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, you fucking ass. Hey, you fucking ass. No, hey, you fucking ass. You fucking ass. I got a question. I got a question, bro. You stuck. Bobby. Uh, all right, don't feel sorry for Lep. He just did two shows and he talked 95% of the time. You're out of order. <laughs> You're out of order. <laughs> this out of court. Out of court. All right. I take the fifth. Here we go. Right. So, no bullshit. And let's cut the shit because I got Thank a lot. Thank you, Lep. Uh, lucky. Go, 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 go. Yeah. 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 All right. Speak. <laughs> I'm trying to. How do you navigate all the egos and tell the truth? Tell us. First of all, how hard it is to deal with all the... And if I hear you say, oh, there, no one has any egos, I'm going to know that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. All right? Because there's a lot yeah. of people listening right now, and, they, and they're trying to get into business. How do you navigate egos? What, how, what's your strategy? The Bobby Tribal way. Fuck. That's a lot. Of, you know, I always tell people we cut out the lames yeah. right out the gate. Someone comes and their egos are too big. It's like, come on, man. We, we've worked <clears> with, <throat> you know, the biggest and the best of of so many different, you know, hip hop and tattoos and rock and roll and just the whole the whole spectrum. So don't don't bring your ego here. Mm-hmm. And if you do, then everybody's a normal person and that's everybody's a regular person. Once and Lucky knows this and Lepke knows this cuz we've been around some big not to talk shit, but we've been around some of the biggest names that In there the are. Like yeah. what? Like what? Come on. Let's you know, rock I'll I'll brag. from like Eminem to Travis. The, yeah, the just blah blah blah, 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 blah. We don't want to pump. We don't want to pump, yeah. yeah, wanna pump up their. We don't want to. We don't want to pump up their ego. All right. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, because Robert, Robert, Robert Plant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but as big as it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But but um, <laughs> at the end of the day, when you hang out with somebody on the real for a day or two, you find out they're normal normal motherfuckers. Right. right. Everybody's just a regular dude, and everybody's got their struggles. Yeah. Right. Every all these pictures that people are painting on their social medias, their lifestyle that's right. that's marketing. That's, right. That's fluff. But when you break it down, like they're having problems with you know everybody has their problems. Everybody yeah, has their wife cooperating. The kids are on drugs. Kids, right. Right. Financial Fuck problems. He's addicted to whatever porn. It is, you know, like, whatever it is. Right. You know? I love everything. Okay, everything, so everything in a you, and the chair, so, the chair acknowledges the so, center from so, sober living. So no, no, it has nothing to do with the sober living. I I'm going to tell you what, what, and like, like me being Go. a little bit known about a little bit of the brand is that you have to establish a rapport in the calle, in the street. Right. Once, like, if you like, I've noticed through Joker brand, through Bobby's gear, even a little bit with Travis yeah. and the famous stars, Bobby yeah. Hundreds, and all them. Yeah. Their gear establishes that like it's like it's okay like like you're a uh what what like what how do you put that okay so we're in the in, in the uh mainstream that's the word i'm looking for the mainstream right the but also on. the mainstream ain't about shit nowadays because right. everything is like fucking plastic and so Drastical. in other words if you keep everything like in a like an underground level because yeah. these these get these brand names like like uh you know, like even Risk, man. Shout out to Risk Third Rail, man. Yeah. When he started up Third Rail, I, I was there when I seen that thing take off. Right. I knew Risk when he was doing this. I knew Bobby. They always stood like, I'm going to let you know. The street sells, man. And if you're a dedicated member of the street. Right. Like we're members of the street. Everything starts in the street. Right. And That's if right. you lose the credibility of the of the street. Right. Then that name ain't shit, bro. Right. Absolutely. So a lot of these like H&M and all this bullshit that they're buying nowadays. Right. Fashion Nova. It's fucking crap. Right. So look, I'm just being Fuck real. Like I'm right. letting you know, bro, because I'm I'm in the, hey I'm in the community, and like, I'm gonna tell you, you got Fuck like there's some fucking lame, like <laughs> like Bobby said it right, like lame, yeah. They, they come into the table, you know. They're like, you have to be, you have to work with. A lot of people don't know this. You, uh, humility and humbleness it yeah. goes a long way, man. When you hit a certain age, yeah, it's cool. To like not want to be fucking famous, bro. Yeah, it's good. Oh. Just like, what are you doing when they're not watching? 
Right. Hey, he, he's absolutely right. Hey, and, man, and, and that cre- that street cred yeah. is really important. It's and, and and the reality to keep as, and I always tell people as corny as it sounds, you keep that shit real. Hey, like, who's the uh, homie? Uh, Let's give him a shout out because he's on my Instagram a lot. The brother that you hooked me up to, he has the the cross and he does it's S. Oh, servants. Give servant, yeah, man. We give the servants a right. shout out, man. That's right. Those so, are the youngsters doing. Yeah, we're giving him a shout out. Lepke's too embarrassed to say anything, and but I'll say it on his behalf. Is there any chance? That he's going to be VP of marketing strategy at Maybe. Tribal Bobby. I'm, I'm doing I mean, he's he just, starting out, right? Did you hear we're, he's, we're putting him on today. He's a right. assistant VP. Of as soon marketing. as the fucking COVID opens, yeah. I'm willing to do that just because <laughs> it'll keep me fucking clean one more day. Bobby, I won't get hot. Listen, I, it's, and Steve and I talk about right. this a lot too. It's right. like. Lefty is fucking gold. I don't know I what it is too. about it, and I don't know how it's to shit. utilize him right. You know what I mean? You but like, but from, he's figuring it out though. Didn't you say uh, you got some shit coming? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, got some like, projects coming. Skinhead see. Rob, man. Skinhead Rob is like got the gun to my back on that one. Rob's Wait, so what too. a project? Shout dude, out Rob. Honest, Rob. My project. Big is shout out Skinhead, Skinhead Rob. Because Skinhead honestly, Rob. Dude, Lepke, power plant. Like, like no I could sit and listen to Lepke talk to a homeless guy probably for like seven days right. straight because it's just <laughs> so why. crazy, but it's also yeah. so true. And yeah. and you and, know they don't want help. <laughs> nah, but, but I won't but, talk to like him for Bobby, a while. like is do you, could 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 there ever be such a thing as a like a Lepke shirt like where it's like Lepke <laughs> line. Big left. No, Look I don't, want, hey, so I tell you I don't want that. I yeah, tell you what. He he's hits on a couple of TV shows he's going to do. Lepke's got to be able to do anything. You'd be Lepke mugs. Right. Lepke backpacks. Right. That business Lepke, model is on the way. Go, he, he's What's done you? some drops in the old tribal videos. I do videos the drops, man. I love Let it become drop. famous. Like right. some they of the like, old, uh, back when they were on hey, VHS days. They stopped me. To this day, I got stopped like a few times. Hey, I see you on the tribal <laughs> drop, yeah, bro. Drop, 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 like a what? Yeah. Especially Lepke's if I'm loaded, I don't like the who. Oh, he would say shit that made yeah. no sense. But yeah. people love that shit. Is he saying, is that the one where he goes, I'm over here sober free? That means he's fucked up. That means he's over. He goes, I'm I'm so living sober free today. <laughs> Somebody there. told me that, that means yeah. 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 <laughs> and I fucked up thinking that I was probably sober. Cause, <laughs> hey, because I was hey, with I you was were, rolling you with cartoons. Cartoon. You were big. Right I was there, rolling too. with cartoon. I'm sober free. Yeah. Cartoons like hey, air. Yeah, cartoon would tell me like this. Hey, you know what we might do today? We might fucking stop smoking. I go oh, and I'm like well, stop smoking. He's like yeah, throw them cigarettes out. Right. Give, give those cigarettes to tobacco a free. Yeah, give those cigarettes to a homeless guy. We're gonna stop smoking. I'm like I don't want to fucking stop smoking i don't want to start i don't want to stay he's like maybe today we're just gonna eat salad for a week i'm like what the-? so that's why when you, you said today right. i'm Fuck tobacco it. free you meant right. to say no I, yeah i smoke since november 27th no, we know that i didn't want to get on we know now you're you know yeah. one thing that that I that i wanted to touch on is is going back to the importance of that credibility right. yes is, is that credibility in all cultures that you represent through your brand Amen. like what are you doing you got lowrider shit all over your brand do do you have one? How right. long have you been doing it? Do you go to car shows? Do you support car the shows? Community, yeah. Are you supporting the community? Are you giving back? Amen. Same thing with if you Come got on. you're doing some shit that has to do with graffiti. Are you right. are you feeding some of these artists? Are you right. paying some of these artists for graphic design or what have you? Tattoos? Like what are you doing within that community? Yeah. And then like like Lepke said, it's in regards to the street community, right. like keeping that credibility. Yeah, tribals in the middle of the neighborhood. Like Amen. our buildings right there. Don't think that the homeboys don't come by and want to have some, you know, discussions. Yeah. So sure. I, it's my responsibility to go out and have these discussions with some of the, the neighborhood guys. Amen. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's that is sure. what makes streetwear, and and this is kind of my thing, real fucking streetwear. It's like sure. we have that attachment to all these cultures and the streets that we represent to this day, right. and not just. Here in Southern California, now it's like our boys that are in Japan or in Mexico or in Colombia or in Taiwan or Thailand or, you know, wherever. Or now Russia's a trip right now. Russia's wow. getting Why? Really, What's up with Russia? Russia's yeah. really getting into the whole Chicano They're culture. Like, really? you right. can find Russian dudes that are straight trying to look like, right. like homeboys. But nowadays the style... Is you know you look at the the homeboys that are running the streets and, and some of the gangsters they look like you know you can't tell them apart yeah, from right. hipsters or skaters sometimes right yeah. but they're they're emulating some of the old 
cholo fashion and style and, and things like that where they're re doing the research like the way the japanese used to yeah yeah you yeah, know and, yeah, the, yeah. and the japanese you don't see it as much as you did before you still see it out there mm. but mm. not not as much as before but you know i always tell people that the whole world has this fascination with Southern California. Of Absolutely. course. You know, and, and things that have come from here. Of course. Things that have come from the beach and the streets and, yeah. the, you know, the, the barrios and just, you know, collectively as as our culture evolves, like people are always tripping on, on what's going on here. Even Spain, man. When Spain showed up here first with Juan Cabrillo and they saw what the Indians Ooh. were doing, they're like, fuck it, we're staying. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there it is. You can take wow. it back. You can take it all the way back right. back to that. But it's uh what's the okay, worst me. what's the worst bit now so look, thirty years of business, right? And yeah. this is something that Ben was telling us. Ooh. Where he was like you know, now you got these like, you know, startups and they even haven't turned a profit and they're talking about how much money they raised and da 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 da. And he's like, dude, me and Bobby, we've been building a company over 10, 20 years, yeah. right? And just putting in the work. And that's the same thing for Tribal. What's the. And so you've had a lot of time for a lot of people who think they know how to do business. Yeah. What's the worst business advice you ever heard? Fuck. I'm, I mean,. Worst. I mean, people usually ask for the on best. You know what I mean? No, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we because, get all that. Well, that yeah, yeah. was that was always a joke back in the day. Like, well, hey, uh, sure, I got sure. a store. No, um, but we all got burned on that. Yeah, consignment. And people. how about Yellow Rat Bastard? How about how those guys would do? You? Wait, wait. What do you remember? You, that? What yeah. are you talking I used to, about? Yeah, I would get paid by yeah, them because he always yeah. wanted more, and I wouldn't give him shit until he paid. Oh, we got the other way around. Yeah, yeah. They were. What are you talking about? What is that? There was a, there was just like there, there was an old scam like like when you're first in the business, you might not know, but somebody like a store is like, hey, let's, I want to do like a ten thousand dollar order with you, and it's our work, and you give me this stuff for thirty days, yeah. right? And I put it in my store, right. and in thirty days, whatever sells, we, it's called consignment. Yeah, but as you begin to get into consignment. If you talk to somebody that knows the business well as been it, they'll tell you never do consignment. Right. Consignment never works out for you. Only works out for one person, a retailer. Right. Yeah. Why? And then you do it because it sounds so <laughs> juicy and good, and you might even do it a few times before you realize it doesn't work. Consignment because you can never get the goods back. They're stained. They're dirty. They're unwrapped. They're this. Right. They're that. They're, it's a fucking shit show. And then you can't inventory. You can't get money. It's like, but but there were guys that would go to all the apparel shows, and their whole scam. Yeah. Was like. I'm going to write this order right. and we're going to do, 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 do and you would see them when you would go to their store they would have this shit but all the brands would change every 90 days right? because they were just scamming dudes and they're running it they're running right. it. I, th I think some of some of the worst and, and Lucky knows this too some of the worst advice I think I've, I've got I didn't follow right and because there were the, back in fuck I don't know 2000 maybe yeah. maybe a little later everybody was hot to get into macy's and bloomingdale's and and all this shit right and be in all the mall stores hey you right. guys need to be in you know pack sun you need to be in journeys you need to be in all this other shit <laughs> right you need and to be yeah so i was i kind of took the approach like no i don't right. like i don't i don't want to be in every store in the mall I don't, and besides that even if we were to land all these accounts we weren't as focused where we could ship it all. Mm -hmm. So so by not, you know, trying to blow up and everybody saying that you need to be in these majors, those brands that took that advice, yeah, 99% of them that were in the same street where Circle is, we were in are gone. Yeah, right. They're not and, and, and they're they're not around anymore because they got burnt out. They got played <laughs> out. They bless you. Bless you. They, they lost their credibility and, and it just became too accessible <clears throat> to everybody and yeah. and there was there was a time when you'd walk around and you'd see no fair shirts everywhere right yeah. you big know? johnson yeah no or fear. you would yeah. and famous went through that phase oh, too like famous yeah, shit was did. everywhere and every Sad every everywhere. brand almost has its time like oh, where they're they're that brand you saw it happen even on fairfax yeah, right. Like when everybody went to started going to Fairfax opening, yeah. the hundreds were like the only guys that were keeping their composure. Everybody else from Crooks and Castles to Diamond Supply to like these companies were like sell. They were everywhere, right? <laughs> right. And in two years later, the stores were gone and they were gone. And and he, Lucky said it perfect. You got to find a way to keep your composure. And I think what I tell people is I th I credit part of our longevity and 
not just to be able to to you know represent and, and keep our graphics tight and our lines is you know people want them you know right. thank god that, that there's still a demand for it right was our inability or lack of focus to ship everything or or not just that what we didn't want to ship to not ship everything we wrote and sometimes we didn't ship because we were you too busy. Have, yeah. yeah, we didn't. Or or we were just too busy traveling or doing tours or having a good old time. And there'd be, you know, a couple million dollars sitting on the desk that we didn't ship. You know what I mean? Mm. Or not shipping, you know, Anchor Blue and Macy's and Bloomingdale's and that, that chain store in the mall that has been hitting us up forever. Because those fuckers could kill you, too, because they would run scams, too, where they would buy your shit. Yeah. They'd write these huge orders. You know, they want to write a half a million dollars, million dollar order. Yeah. You ship them, and guess what? If it doesn't move, they're going to send it back to you, and they ain't going to pay you. Right. Or they're going to charge you back for it. Right. So all right. that sort of advice, mm. miss me with that shit, mm. you know? It's like, I'm... I'm and, and I always tell people there's a lot of and i've said this before and i understand completely that there's different factions or different types of street what they're calling streetwear right yeah. now and and mm. we don't get acknowledged as as being like a pioneer we don't get acknowledged by a lot of these brands as being streetwear that have you know or or experts yeah that, that know everything that have been around for five years or 10 years or 15 years or even or 30 20, or whatever. Yeah. But no one's been around as long as us, mm -hmm. you know, or have been doing it as long as we have. But I think that it's, it's just, um, there's so many different things going on with streetwear right now. And, mm -hmm. and some of it I, I, I dig. And some of the people are real cool. Bobby mm -hmm. and Ben, I've got, you know, they've always been good to me and they've, they've, they know what's up and they're, they're good dudes and yeah. they've got they're a good, good brand. They're right. good people and they've got a good brand and, and they're respected. Um, but there's other bullshit out there that's just Absolutely. like, God, give me a fucking yeah. break. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that's just generated, <gasps> you know, on, on the computer or what have you. But mm. I think our inability to ship some shit kind of saved your ass. Yeah. Or, yeah. or just out of focus. It, it's, sometimes, it's, you know? that, it's that old, it's that old, like, I was saying that I think I, the time I was in the joint through the 90s probably saved my life. Yeah. Because there was so much shit going on in the streets. You know, like, like by <laughs> default, it was it too much for you to handle. You. you know, like, yeah. Well, <laughs> it was yeah. too exciting. It yeah. was too exciting for like, much, you know? so, like <laughs> the fact that all. you guys, for one reason or another, didn't ship those orders yeah. right? Right. to some of those retailers, kept them out of trouble. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, and the other thing that really strikes me now that we've got, you know, um, a legacy almost um, streetwear clothing and, and, and you know, T-shirt designer here is um, like I as every single one of my friends and acquaintances. They all think that they could start a T-shirt brand like right now. They would just go to custom ink. They got some idea. Da -da -da -da. What's the secret? What what is it that they don't fully understand? Maybe anyone can do it. Okay, let's just say that. But what is it that most people don't get about this business that you actually really have to understand? Well, anyone can, right? Because I always tell my sons, one's one's a, a musician and he's mm -hmm. doing you know he's he's doing fairly well. My he's other son good. has his own his own streetwear brand too. Mm -hmm. My older son, I always tell them the next shit, the next big shit's got to come from somewhere. Right, because everybody wants the fresh shit, the next shit. Mm -hmm. If you got a, sh if you want to take a shot, take a shot. Right. You know what I mean? If you right. think you could do it, you could do it. The industry has changed tremendously. Like Lucky was saying, there used to be a lot of mom and pops. There were cool hip hop shops. There was cool skate shops. There was you know cool clothing stores or head shops. We were selling to so many <clears> different <throat> stores. Ninety percent of those are gone. Mm, so yeah, if yeah, you if absolutely. you want to start a brand. And I'm not I'm not an expert as far as as far as what the market I guess maybe come on but maybe come on <laughs> but I think it is finding a different approach to it you know kids are always going to want new stuff styles change right um, if someone wants to give it a shot give it a shot but <clears throat> but but what do they like understand the distribution of it is is you can have the coolest products but. How are you going to sell it? Are you going to sell it online? Are you going to sell it to stores? If you're planning on selling it to stores, make make a list of the 20 stores you're going to try to get into, right. the 10 stores you're going to try to get into. And now, where are those stores? Right. You know, you, you, if you're not going to get into 
Where's the stores, Lucky? Do you know? Yeah, where are the stores, Lucky? <laughs> God damn it! You know where's what I'm the saying? Stores? Like, yeah, they're very if, far and few between. Because most yeah. pe- most brands have their own stores. Sure. If they're doing anything, they have right. their own stores. There are some stores. Like we're still shipping, you know, stores in Albuquerque and sure. New York right, and, right, right. you know, little but brick stores and mortar are shrinking. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And and you know, figure out how you're going to sell your product, what you're going to invest in your product, and as soon as you have product, yeah. Hook me up. Mm. That's what motherfuckers come at you. Like your boys, your friends. Your co- and sometimes you want to. You're like, <laughs> hell yeah. I want this dude to rock it. I want this dude to rock it. Right. So that stuff, it's, I always tell people, it's the same. Like people come into my, my warehouse or, or building or store or whatever. And yeah. I give them stuff. But then some people, they don't realize that all this shit costs money. <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if, you're, <laughs> if you're starting a new brand, yeah. you don't have... Ten dollar bills to be handling mm-hmm. twenty dollar bills, forty dollars, right. fifty dollars here. You might, right, depending on on you know how your business is run. But but be careful with all that shit because that that can kill that you too. That, hey, that really does. What's you know? the process? Okay, I, that totally makes sense to me. So then, what is the process, you guys, when you actually are going to a brick and mortar store and you're trying to get them interested in your fucking shirt or your clothes or your pants, whatever it is. How does that work, actually? What is the actual nuts and bolts of that? Do you walk in with samples, and, and who's the guy you're supposed to talk to? It's That's changed, that's him. too, man. Lucky did a lot more of that shit. Yeah, Lucky, what'd you do? I mean, it, it, it's, is it true that people will slide a dime bag of weed with the shit to try to get their industry? <laughs> How does it work? How does it work? How'd you I do it, Lucky? I think that in the 90s, there was, I, I mean, I was, there was independent stores all around. Yeah. So you you could find an independent store, and maybe there was like either just that one big store or one little store, or whatever. Yeah. And maybe they added three of them. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But you could actually park your car outside, uh. bring in your sample rack, have your business card, your line sheets, and walk in and be like, "Is the owner or the buyer here?" Right. And then if they were, hey, can I see you? I want to show you my line. Right. And they could either tell you, you know what, uh, I'm cool. Or they'd be like, okay, you know what? Set up right now. We'll give you 10 minutes. Show me the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, or, you know what? I'm busy right now. Come back on Fridays. I look at the lines on Fridays. You know? Right. Come on Friday. So you could go in and you'd sell your line. Yeah. You'd fucking... And a guy might be like, I got, you got 10 minutes, bro, and show me. Yep. <laughs> and you better give me a discount. I better yeah. look at it. That, 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 that's and, true. And that's, and that's how you do it. But there was... So that's one way that you do it. You would also... Try and go to these convention shows when real buyers used to walk the floor of the yeah, show. Right. And right. you 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 know, you're standing there, hopefully your shit looks attractive and cool right. enough that they're like they lean in. Hey, do you have a line sheet? Hey, well, why don't you come in? Yeah. I don't really want to give you a line. Why don't you come in and take a look at the line? Yeah. Take ten minutes. And I would show them like key pieces. Like yeah, yeah I would have like three or four home runs. Lucky that, was good that too. I know Lucky if I show good. you this, they're yeah. gonna be like Oh, let me sit down and watch you. Yeah. And so you finagle them like that, you know? Yeah, and finagle. What, 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 what Bobby, like what Bobby like was that. saying was that. Finagle, I like that. There, were, there was points in time where <laughs> there were some of these brands, some of these other brands where they would have that buyer and that or a great relationship. Where right. The buyer, they'd take the buyer out to dinner in Vegas or whatever. Like, yeah. And they, they're, they're keeping this buyer under wraps. Wow. They don't want anybody seeing them. Yep. them. They don't want you knowing they know them. <laughs> well. Miller's Outpost buyer. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but, you can have Fred Siegel. American yeah, Eagle. Yeah, yeah. Fred yeah. Siegel. American yeah. Eagle. So, so, but with Chess the King. little crew that we had together. Yeah. Us. Yeah. There was, there was like, we would trade that information. Hey, you got that. Hey, you got that. Hey, you got that. We would give back information, make introductions. Yeah. I, 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 I listen. There, I can I can tell you right now. Yeah, I can remember on both. I'd have to count on two hands the amount of times Bobby walked over from his booth. Right. Yeah, some unknowingly, unwittingly, like Thai or Asian guy. Hey, they bring him over. He goes like, <laughs> "This be lucky," and they, oh, oh, and this, and, this, and, this, and, this, and Bobby go like, "You." This joker you buy. Yeah. This good brand for your store. <laughs> oh, right. oh, okay, Bobby. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they go right in there and they write right. the orders. Yeah. Or somebody from England or whatever. Right. Whatever. Even fucking Lucky Lucky would walk over and be yeah. like, So Bobby. <laughs> yeah. but, you know, he would ask me, he goes, Hey, this 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 right. buyer came over from that has this chain store. What do you know about him? Right, you know, or or this customer from whatever country, like we would share this kind of information. Like it was, 
it was the way that that we would do it. As far as us, the way we've always sold our brand, yeah. In in thirty like thirty one years now, yeah. we've had three reps. We've never had mm. real reps. Like my brother did it for a while. And then we had this girl from Canada that would sell but occasionally just on the phone. Yeah. And then this guy that was. So we never really relied on reps. And then again, it goes back to what I was saying before. We probably could have done a lot more if we pushed a little harder. Mm. But Tribal has never been. And Lucky could tell you this. I've never been sell, 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 sell. Like right. really push you with the brand. Right. looking for more cooler shit to do right. than money maker shit. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know? and, and we would rely on the trade shows. We would rely yeah. on the people walking by Absolutely. our booths. And we would rely on people going like, word of mouth. Oh, this, this brand's cool, but if you can get it, if they'll ship you, if, you know, if they'll pay attention to you. And we paid as much attention as we could. And, and it's, sometimes it's hard to pick and choose because sometimes you ship a store and be like, oh, that one's you know, it's a fucked up store. What, you know, but it was more about, um, they would maybe relying on them coming to us based on our image, reputation, trade show, um, you know, just, just shit like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually trying to put together a show and I think I could sell a lot of tickets and it's going to be worth a lot. And what it's going to be is it's going to be reenactments of, of Big Lux <laughs> talking to little tiny Asian reps, oh, like wow. putting his arm around them and dragging yeah. them over. Oh, you know, I could totally picture that. Right. I, I think I, I have that pay, picture in my what, head somewhere. I don't pay money cool. to see that. You know what's cool, too, is that when you would, you would hit on like you might hit on some overseas business and maybe it'd be it could be anywhere. Yeah. You know, but you'd be somewhere overseas. Let's just say that you did something and say Amsterdam, right? Right. And you do really good with this one store, right? Yeah. You're doing real well, and they show up and they're on point. And then after like two or three times that you've done real well in the store, the person comes over and they bring over like this time they're traveling with like six other buyers. Wow. And they bring and they'll be like, hey, and they come in a crowd and they're like, all right, so my friend here, she has a store in Holland. My friend mm-hmm. here. And they would travel together, and do, but once you were good with one right. store, right? They all knew the little like. So then you'd really be doing good because you, that could happen in Thailand. That could happen. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember that happening with overseas. You got to remember these buyers would uh, they would only see you seasonally, right? So they would like, oh, can you sign this? Can I take a picture with you? Oh, uh, God. And this is before the phone pictures, right? It's like they'd have cameras, right? And, we'd take, and they'd want to print these pictures real big. And put them in their store. Yeah, because it's real shit. Right. So this is how it was. So they like, don't got people that look like you in Holland, bro. Right now, oh. now th- that guy, ah, that ah. guy that's doing well with your goods. Yeah, yeah. he's a big fish in the pond. Yeah. If he's the connection, right. to us, right? Because he gets to walk in and be like, and now, so now he's got clout, right? Know? But yep. I remember that international business work like that, and like Bobby was really good in certain areas. What do you mean, like? Like Thailand, he was always like he always had a presence, and they had a store in Thailand, and even Japanese business. So, though, when a group of Japanese people would be walking around, right, you know, you'd see Bobby, and he'd be walking, there'd be like a crowd of Japanese people everywhere, <laughs> right, right, yeah, or a crowd of like Stop Israeli it. guys yeah. around. So, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> and then he could easily bring that crowd right over to your booth. Hey, and the next thing you know, you're writing a bunch of orders. You know what I mean? Yeah, wow. and and you know what? Um, speaking of international, speaking of Japan, because one of, one of the show's favorite things, one of Steve's favorite things, one of my favorite things, one of Sh- oh, Blue Eyes OBE's favorite things is <laughs> whenever we hear about Polly stories in Japan, because oh, there's shit. a great story about. Oh yeah. Right? Does Does Bobby have any good Polly stories? Well, like, ask Bobby. I'm looking asking. Right I'm right looking at. at no, I, look at him. Okay. Yeah, look yeah, at him. Yeah, okay. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Bobby, do you got any good you Polly know, B stories? Polly, Come on. Polly Come on. was one of those characters that was like fuck right. dude that i met paul of course through lucky yeah. of course but one time he brought him out to trade show right and he had just got he out. loved you bro yeah he, he, when loved, he, he loved bobby tribal dude <laughs> he did <laughs> how dude. did you know <laughs> was, i don't know why but he wanted, <laughs> how did you he wanted know? to get to like san diego and always get on the bike to bobby tribal oh, God, bobby that tribal sent him this bobby tribal that right oh, man bro. right he was he was a beautiful person, right? Like, yeah. all, all around, right. like yeah. just, just, e- and to see him transition right. from that the story I'm gonna tell you right now mm-hmm. till you know when he passed, like just, just how much he developed, and he had yeah. a way of talking to people. Right. 
that was the coolest. Mm-hmm. Like this dude, it, it was like mm-hmm. Lucky could do it, but yeah, not as good as Polly. Not, pa- not as not yeah. as good as yeah, not yeah, as yeah. good as Polly. I enjoy listening to Lucky speak. Right, like Lucky has style. Right, Lucky has like right now on the mic. He's 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 you know. He's doing his show. Right. But when you hang out with Lucky and, and you're having a meal or you're just shooting the shit, right. he's got a style about him. that, And he'll tell you, I walk up to him and I would do impersonations of him to him. <laughs> Can you do it? Can you do Steve no, right now? Not right now. Not right now. Hey, no, but his neck thing, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, he, when he tries to breathe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When, 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 yeah <laughs> when he's always like in the middle of a conversation and he sticks his neck up. And yeah. That's to, so true. Trying to, he trying does. Trying to right. gasp, and, and you know, gasping for air. That's exactly right. Or clearing his throat yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then now yeah, I, I would just tell him, are you doing that kind of like, is it habit now? Is it real? So anyways, right. Polly. What? Polly came to trade show. Back to Polly, right? Polly, yeah. Polly came to trade show, and I don't know where we were staying at some hotel. And Polly was going to stay in my room. I don't remember who the hell, if it was Esteban or you, or we were all kind of just hanging out and drinking. And Polly, he has his shirt kind of pushed down over his <laughs> over his, his midsection, right? And he's like, "Bro, I got this idea. <laughs> you know, we're at. The, do you remember this?" We're at the trade no, show. No. I got this concept. I think it's gonna work. I'm, I just, I, I, I've been working on it. I want to show you. I got the sick fucking buckle, like the tribal buckle. Like it, it's gonna, it's hot. It's gonna, people are gonna love it. I've, I've, I'm like, I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? What's this guy about to do? And he's like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's the next shit and blah blah blah. And he goes, you want to see it? I go, I go, yeah, bro, let's fuck. You know, you got me, you got me curious. Then this motherfucker pulls up his shirt. He's standing up, and he's gonna show me his belt buckle, and he's got his balls yeah. hanging over his fucking yeah, he's a the jumper. top of the top of his fucking pants. He's got his balls where his buckle would be, and I stopped and I'm like, I I caught me completely by surprise. I'm like, this motherfucker, <laughs> and I looked and I, I at first it, I didn't like I. I was like in shock. Like, <laughs> wait a minute, those are your balls, bro. <laughs> that's, that's not a that buckle. Was great. But it yeah. was, it was, it was, yeah. It was yes. just his balls where his buckle would be. You kind of have to respect a guy that put that much energy into a practical joke. Oh uh, yeah, and he would he would be in the room doing burpees and just yeah, you know, no yeah. Hey man, it's know, like it's, Steve tells a story about how. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and probably being Estevan and everybody went. Estevan tells a great story oh, about yeah, probably be passing out from smoking weed on the plane just yeah. on the flight to Japan. Yeah. Oh, right? Like, they haven't even gotten to Japan. And then my other favorite one is the one where they lost track of him in Japan. Yeah. And they're like, well, the plane's going to leave back to LA. We can't find them, so we're just going to have to leave. And so everyone's at the airport. And just as they're boarding the plane, there's all this commotion. And Polly comes walking, and he's got like a Japanese family with him with a baby. Yeah, he's got like a wife and baby with him. <laughs> Fully all in the, like the whole family, they come running up. And he's holding the baby, holding the girl. Damn. And she's like this like red haired Japanese girl that's like a soap opera, like somebody. Somebody. Yeah. yeah she's yeah. like an actress that's in the, the soap opera. Thing I ever heard. And uh he and now he's a new stepdad. Just add a little alcohol, instant family. Bro. Right. And he had been hemmed up with this girl for like fucking two days. We didn't know. It wasn't like, <laughs> no phone, no nothing. He shows up at the airport and he's tonguing her down and killing the baby. <laughs> and, yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and he gets on the plane, he's like, um, hey bro, the first thing he says to me, he goes, Hey bro, I gotta put her up in a hotel in two weeks. She's coming to LA with the baby. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> And he's got a wife and kid. This dude right. could, at home. just his personality and the oh. way he would say shit, he could sell you anything. anything. Right. Yeah, he and he sell. had a way, a method, but I mean, we all knew him and he wasn't, right. he he would conduct his own business away to make his money. Yeah. yeah. But he had, he had style like a motherfucker. Right. right. Yeah. He was yeah. a stylist. Yeah. If he wanted to come in. Funny as you fuck, He's too. like, we're going to have business meetings. He's like, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna take him to the steak fucking restaurant. Right. I'm gonna pull up in this. I'm gonna get a fucking rental car to yeah. have them picked up. Like he, he knew how to motherfucking wine you and dine yeah. you, bro. Right? He would get. It didn't matter who you are. He would get you in the palm of your hand. He would right. find out what you like, who you are, uh-huh. and find a way to do something where he didn't throw it in your face. It'd be real like subtle, <laughs> real subtle, bro. Yeah. To yeah. where whoever the guy is, they're like. 
Like they want to hang out with Polly by the time that meeting's over, they right. just want to go hang out with Polly B and be one of Polly B's friends. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um I sent you a picture of him not too long ago, didn't I? Mm. I think I, I texted you a picture. Probably. Hey, big I just left. I'll fuck with Polly B. Hey, do you yeah, have a Polly B story, bro? I got too many, man. Te- yeah. Jimmy, get, let, te- let the let the listener know. Give us one. One time I was rolling with him, I hadn't seen him for a minute. So we're rolling. We were working the club. Mm-hmm. Remember the club? Mm-hmm. So we were doing the club thing, and he's rolling with me, man. And he's like, man, I need all the money I could get. Like, are you with it? I'm like, yeah, I'm with it. <laughs> man, yes. Yeah, like, what do you mean? I like, need all the money I can get. <laughs> I'm with it. Like, last, yeah, like, I'm, like, like yesterday, I'm with it. He's like, yeah, you in the grand. How, how's that room? Is that room legit? Is it under your name? I'm like, yeah, the room's under my name. But I can't, uh, yeah, because I, I can't, we can't be, like, taking nobody out up in there. I mean, because I got my ID on that. <laughs> <laughs> you go bring a motherfucker up in there, you know, like, I, 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 he goes, no, no, I'm not, nothing like that, bro, nothing like that. So anyway, the, 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 go, go a little bit further down the line. He's, I'm like, this dude is desperate. He needs money. He didn't look good because we were working the door. Right. Right. We're, right. We're working the door. Like, you working the door. Like, if you're making big money, you don't need to work the door. You, right. You got money. Right. The door work itself. Right. Yeah, the door's going to work. Anyway, so uh, I, I go do a violation. I come out. So uh, 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 Esteban, he's in the office. He goes, don't leave yet. Are you, uh, the, 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 where, are you, where are you on your way to? I go, I ain't going nowhere, man. I already got my dope. I'm cool. I'm like, Can I sit here for a minute? He's like, yeah, you can kick it. Polly B wants to talk to you. He wants to get at you. You know, you, last time he saw you was when you guys did that. You went and did the violation. Now you're out. But he wants to talk to you. He's going to come to me. I go, that broke motherfucker. Like, what can he offer me? Like, I mean, like, what he goes, no, he just stay here. He wants to talk. Like, like so he went to, like, so I seen him when he was, like, struggling in the in the bucket. And then he pulls up and, like, some, fuck, bro. It's like, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Is that, it's like, is that his? And he's like, yeah, don't trip. You know, that. he's going to come talk to you. So he's like looking at me. He's like, "Hey man, like, hey, you look good. Like, why don't you try to stay out this time?" Like he's schooling me down, right? I'm yeah. like, "Yeah, all right. I'm listening. Like, I'm, I'm keeping quiet, right?" Like, yeah. the motherfucker just pushed up in like a three hundred fifty thousand dollar whip. Sure. Yeah, he's all cheated up, bro. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like, like hey, bro. Like, my, hey, hey, hey. Polly hey, hit. Hey, my, hey, my, hit. Hey, my next, hey, my next sentence is, I need a job, bro. You know, like, <laughs> hey, can you hire me? Put me on. He's yeah. like, I'll tell you what, man. You hold that thought. Uh, he told us, he looks at his stepmother, he goes, does he got any money? And his stepmother's like, I don't know what he has, bro. I'm like, no, I ain't got no fucking money. He comes out of the pocket, <laughs> man, he's got like a fucking, like a, like a fucking, like, you know, one of them. Uh, Cabbage bags. Yeah, like a got, knot. He's got the knot, bro. Yeah. He's like peeling them. Like, how much should I give him? I don't want him to kill himself. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's like, exactly wanna, what he said. Like, I don't want to give him too much. I'm like, man, look, like, uh, he has me like you know. He puts me up. You know, money ain't you know, money ain't shit. But you know, it's like I left out of there smiling. That's right. what that's what I see. I left right. out of, like I left out of there smiling. The transition, like, that bro. Game. Like I got you. Like I'm here twenty four seven. Like for like, hey, real, generous. Like, I got you, bro. bro. This dude had yeah. been hustling right. his whole life. Yeah. Tried and and, and Polly B. They weren't all. <clears throat> they they weren't bad ideas. His execution of things. With so many shortcuts that he could never, he'd fuck himself off. His right, shit, right, right. But he'd have these opportunities, and he right. went to prison behind some of these opportunities, and, and things like that. But he was always trying to, and there was a little bit of Polly man that I knew in his heart, like he he needed some he needed some um, validation. Polly B seeked some validation, right? And he felt he needed to be able to show up a certain way, yeah, to get. The respect and validation needed, right? And it was always in Polly B. Like I knew, because I know, I knew him inside and out. Right. I knew what he was against and what he was. And bro, it was you know it was. Polly B ended up, you know, through a friend of mine. Yeah. That I hooked up with, turning something, and they turned something into something very big. I'm not gonna discuss on on what it was and how it was but Polly got to be that guy right. that he'd always wanted to be he was that dude yeah right he was that guy he was yeah flying out to have Jesse James build the bike for him right right and deliver this shit right uh, he was the guy that like bought his mom the house the fucking like it, it, you could the newest chain the newest watch and this is before like like he's fucking wearing shit that fucking fifty and M are wearing, like right. that type of shit, bro. Right. All his shit is 
first class, bro. No, yeah, hey, I remember another story too. Like Cartoon would buy some shit. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. I, was, I, was, I was gonna and say he'd that. Push up again, and then Cartoon would look at me, and go, "Why is this motherfucker trying to outdo <laughs> yeah, me?" I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, he ain't yeah, trying yeah. to outdo Norman. I mean, he's like, uh, I couldn't figure it out. You know, I was at a stage in my life where I was looking at it like. Oh well, he just like let, like cartoon would get something, and Polly V would drive up with like the same shit, uh-huh. uh, uh, intensified by like ten. Right? <laughs> yeah, he uh-huh. really hit him on the on the jewelry yeah, tunes, game. Too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the jewelry I remember, game. Like, I remember game. Polly V was big on that jewelry game. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. he if he if right. he w- if and kind of like. Tunes was somebody like if he heard that right. Tunes had that one, he'd he be like, out. "I want to order was the that? one that's coming hey. from fucking Switzerland." Hey. Hey, right. And I don't get. I'm sleep, but I was with probably be a couple times when we go by that is that why that Jewish dude that? in downtown. Yeah, I know. And he'd be like, "Let me run in there." Yeah. He would drop fucking fifty, right. eighty grand off in cash with that right. dude. Make sure that shit gets to me. And that's how right. Paulie B was, bro. He was just like. I can't, I know, I mean, this motherfucker gave me a Rolex, man, for right. my birthday. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I, yeah, I saw he get down, man, and, and he hit, and he was able to take care of the people around him yeah. right. that he loved and cared about, his crew. Right. He made sure he did something special. And Polly B always made right. you feel special when you showed up somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, he would go yeah. out of his way to do something that... Only you and him knew about it. He, right. like, he was real like that old school like that. He you was know what silent. I'm he did the silent shit, man. That was a trip. Yeah. When you do shit silently like that, like that's cool, man, because that's going to stay with you and it's going to stay in your heart at all times, man. He hit me a few times silently. I tripped down. I'm like, man, this dude is like, but I had his back. Like, I'll take a bullet for the motherfucker, that type of shit. Right. Like, homie, I'm down. Like, whenever you, he's like, man, you know what? You, you, you know, you, 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 oh, I got you, bro. Don't trip. <laughs> I'll come get why you. Did he, why did Polly love uh, yeah. Bobby Travel so much? What was it? I don't know what it was about the. Uh, he knew that Bobby had San Diego on lock. Right. Yeah. So to to Polly, he right. he wants to politically yeah. he liked him because of that. Right. But he also likes being able to go somewhere where he's in right. with like the people that are in. Right. So that was like uh, but, that but, made, uh, yeah. but like entree. Was, yeah, dude. And he'd and he and there was certain shit like you see Paul, you catch Paul, pictures of Polly B. Yeah, and you'll see him like in a tribal shirt, man. You know, like, yeah, right. we, we, like you know what it was at the end of the day, we were all part of the same family. Right, right. We, were, yeah, we yeah. all we all we grew we up ran on the together. Side. We we yeah. all hung together like as much as we could. Yeah, you know when I was in L.A., this was my family. When they'd come to San Diego or trade oh, let shows, let me say this. Let you know, say it was this. Polly B. Though, let me say this for not to interrupt you. Polly B. Keep in mind. Go ahead. From the gate, yes, was about apparel. Right. Polly B was doing Bronze Age shit with those dudes. He was doing, he was doing the beginning of Supermax with me. Yeah, he was like Polly B was about like that grind, and he knew that Bobby was all about apparel. Like, there's a certain group of people that when you spend time in like screen printing houses, yeah, and right. building brands, yeah. yeah, you're in with that. And Polly B was in that world, right. and he knew. He, you respect the hustle in each other. Yeah. And you knew Bobby <laughs> dominated that shit in San right. Diego. Yep, he designed right. that buckle for me. Right. Oh, right. Right. <laughs> Very intricate, very uh, veiny, yeah, very hairy buckle. <laughs> yeah. Looked like a plucked chicken, right? I thought, you, I thought you would tell me like that was like maybe the first or second time you met Polly B with the buckle store because he would that do inappropriate a, shit oh, like that. He was a fool. He really didn't know you well enough to do that. <laughs> nah, but he did. Do you know have a good story? Hey, Steve, do you got a good story about that where Polly B didn't know somebody and he was like, hey, I want I'll show you my belt buckle. No, but like kind of like the way how he talks to you and he didn't know you. Yeah. He would just do that oh, shit with people. True. Yeah, he didn't even know me. He was like, mm-hmm. Steve was like, this is my buddy Chumahan. I'm thinking about taking him to, what right. was it, Mastro's. And, right. and fucking Polly B didn't, had never met me before and his entire ah. life took one look at me and goes, ah, he ain't ready for Mastro's. I was yeah. like, damn, yeah. Yeah. Love. Yeah. I remember one day, I'm in, uh, one day I'm in the store <laughs> and this is when we had yeah, the, the Wasted, Wasted Youth, Youth store yeah. right. in Hollywood and I remember one day I'm there and Many countless crazy stories with Polly, but one time I'm in there, <laughs> I'm at work, and I got Elliot with me, he's yeah. managing, and I get the phone rings, and what's up? He goes, hey, are you there? Are you going to be at the store? Because I got to come back. You're going to be there? Gonna be, I'm on there. He comes down about 45 minutes later. He goes, I'm coming down to see you. Got something important. Mm-hmm. Like, All right. Comes in. Right. I'm doing something with a customer, and he's like, Elliot, can you take over for Lucky? <laughs> and, then, and Elliot's like, sure. And he goes, come on, dog, come on. And I go, where are we going? He's like, we got to go over here. And he doesn't tell me anything. And we walk into some store. And I guess the guy had like some famous. But we had famous on lock. Oh, shit. Because I was running famous, right? Whoa. And I don't know how he got it. And Polly B's kind of like, 
All right, man. Hey, and he calls this dude into the back room. <laughs> yeah. And I don't Actually, even know what's going on. Right, right, right. Right. And he's like right. pushing up against the dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And bro, you understand? You're not going <laughs> to sell this brand. Right. You can give us all these clothes right now. You give it, give it to us, and you're never going to, you don't buy famous. And he's like telling the dude that you can carry this brand, but you can't carry this brand. And he's telling the guy. Yeah. And we walk out of there, and he hands me like a stack of like some fucking clothes. And we walk out yeah. of there. But that was Polly B. Like, do you. you yeah. You wouldn't even like. He might be like, "You got a mask, <laughs> right?" Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> He'd be like, "Cause we're about to do this robbery right now." Like, yeah. you be pulling over. Yeah, you be in the middle. <laughs> you be in the shit. You're yeah. in the middle. Like, and you're probably like, and, like Damn. and he did shit like that, man. Right. He had me go with him sometimes. And, yeah. and he goes, "I just need you to sit in the car." Right. And who right. knows what he was telling <laughs> right. the people yeah, inside? Right. Like that dude out there. Right. He's, He's about to yeah. come in and shoot everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, dude? Like he right. did shit like that, bro. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Darren was working at Wasted. You, Darren, the director, who's wow. like a major director now, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he was working for Lucky at at Wasted Youth, and he said that. Like, you know, Polly V would come in and out there and there would be all these stories about floods and insurance or whatever. Nobody really knew, understood everything, whatever. But he said one time he came out and he said that uh, somebody came up and said, hey, I need you to come over here. And he walked over and somebody had handed him a card and there was somebody, I don't know who it was, but there was on top of the building across from the street yeah. with like a giant telephoto lens the working face. for some sort of authority oh, yeah, yeah, that was yeah. talking to Darren and they was like, I don't want to know anything. I don't know anything about yeah. anything. Uh, so, um, that was just another Polly B story where uh, you know somebody was caught up in some of the stuff. I remember when, you remember, you remember Julie? That I was going out with, yeah, okay. Triple D. We were going out, and I remember it was like like the second or third time me and her were going to go out on a date, right? And I was trying to get this, you know. And I'm closing up the store, and Polly B calls me. He goes, "I'm on my way there, hey bro. I need your help." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "What? I got this. I'm seeing this." Shit. He's like, "Hey man, how often do I tell you that I need you? How often do I call you and tell?" Yeah. <laughs> And I fuck your partner in the store. And it just makes a whole big thing. I'm like, right. all right, all right. <laughs> we got to go somewhere. He goes, no, I just need it for a couple hours. Like, all right. Close the store. Waiting for this motherfucker. Knock at the back door. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I let him in. He has fucking a big ass. One of those big fucking <laughs> duffel bags, dude. Like, oh, it's the army super duper deluxe one. Right? <laughs> in. And he comes in there and he throws the fucking bag on the floor. Yeah. And I'm like, what's up? And I'm thinking for a quick second, I'm like, is this guy bringing the dead body in here? Or what the fuck? Right. <clears throat> and he's like, hey, bro, I need you to help me count this money. We have mm-hmm. to count this money. I have to get this money. Kind of fucking unzips that shit, bro. <laughs> and, dude, we didn't even finish counting all the money. We counted money for like three and a half hours and still didn't finish, bro. Oh, shit. It, dude, this motherfucker. And he did it on two occasions. That's the kind of shit <laughs> that's going on with Polly B when you're his business partner. You got the, the feds. You know, an OC organized crime unit fucking yeah. our place under surveillance. They're taking pictures. <laughs> There's different, you know, d- detectives dropping their cards off. Hey, have you seen this guy we need to talk to? There's all sorts of things yeah. we can get into. But I appreciate you giving me the Polly B story. Though, yeah, brother. that was great. Was and then and then another thing, Bobby, what is it that people, oh, what were you going to say? Nah, that's, that was, that was his dog, man. Yeah, that, I know. That, that yeah, was, right. that was his, his main homie. Like, yeah, and, and the hit. We like went said, down a couple Lucky, times together. Lucky's right, personality. Right. Yeah. Polly was right. cooler though. Right. Yeah. Polly Polly had some style that was like un unmatched. Yeah. Like right. The way things yeah. he would do, the way he would like he had develop best, things in his head, like the way he would buckles. Yeah, he was a shit. Hey, yeah. did you hey yeah. luck, were you were you locked up when he passed? No, I was out. You no, did no, where no, did no, you go? Back. You weren't at the funeral, no? <laughs> yeah, I was. I just went. You went sat, in and out. Yeah, me and you. Yeah. I sat there with his mom right, and his son. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. I just yeah. missed you. I came and, after. And I was using at the time. Me too. And I brought. Okay. <laughs> we were hey. And I brought, I brought <laughs> Vincent. That's a coincidence. So was right. I. I yeah. brought Vincent. I brought Vincent with me. That's why I didn't because, see you. And, but I remember telling Vincent, <laughs> we're sitting there, and I wanted Vincent to go right, 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 because right. he needed to see. He had needed right. to be there. He right. knew Paul, right? Yeah. But when we sit there, I wanted him to be there because Sammy was there. And they a were lot both of the same age and, and grew up together. And I remember saying to Vincent and his his uh, rest in peace, right. man. Rest Polly peace, B's man. fucking mom, rest bro. Rest in peace, man. God, I love that right. fucking woman. Her and Sammy are sitting there and they're right. in. Bro. Right. This fucking kid. 
uh-huh. is in tears, bro. Right, right. And it's that unconsolable right. type yeah, of crying. Yeah, right. And it's, so is his, his Polly B's mom. Right. And I'm sitting there, um, and Vince is watching, and I'm looking at them, and I'm going, I will never do this right. to mm. you. Right. Mm. I might have done some shit, sure, but yeah, I won't yeah. do this to you. I won't put you through this. And I continue to use, you know, and yeah. I still think about that. But I remember when I showed up, mm. I... You know, man, I would get the fucked up crying phone calls mm-hmm. at three in the morning from Polly B. Right. You know, that I, I want to change. Man. Right. I want to stop doing, 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 right. doing, doing. By right. seven o'clock in the morning, I, 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 you don't know what he called about, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. right? But all of this shit, right. I've been busting and gone fought in fucking yeah. sentences with that guy. And when we showed up, there were a lot of people at big, that, that funeral. Big. And I don't know why at the right. time I felt like... Right. Other people were making Polly B's death about them, right? Crazy. Like, do you know do, do, I what do I'm know saying that. makes I, sense right yeah. now? Absolutely. Yeah. Now I, I don't think that way a lot anymore right. because right. I'm less selfish, right? Okay, right. Yeah. But at that point in time, that was stuff that was big for me. When somebody, when that shit happens, I don't want to be around. You right. weren't really, I th- this motherfucker. Right. That's why I'm sitting with his mom and his son, right? right. And I got in, and I got out. And, got I got, in, I got and everybody, was like, and it was just like I wasn't feeling all that, man. Right. I don't know what that was, but it was where he was at that time. Right. Right. You know? I think he, who he was surrounding himself with, and he, he was just in a different place. There was a lot know? of people at that at that spot. Yeah. Think that's that's probably what. You and I, I remember right. what is really crazy is that I was uh, frustrated right. with all that because I right. felt like that wasn't right. you know that whatever. Right. So I left. And I remember, and I remember I didn't mm-hmm. mourn. His death didn't. I didn't shed a tear. Nothing. And I remember mm. it wasn't until five, seven years later. Dude, hit. I'm driving. Hit. Yeah, driving. I'm listening to this pop song. Right. And dude, I just start fucking right. bawling. And this is like seven, eight years later. Right. I cry, bro, I cried for about twenty minutes right. over Polly B no longer being on this planet. That's crazy. But I was so balled up. Was right. selfish anger about what other people were doing, and right, probably right. made it about myself. Yeah. In a way, really, when I was, but uh, <clears throat> and I mourned it later on, and mm-hmm. and I was able to be extremely close with his mother, bro, mm-hmm. extremely close with his mom until I so I spoke to her a week before she passed away while I was in San Francisco. Wow. Um. So yeah, man, I love that guy, and mm-hmm. and I talked to his mm-hmm. son on a regular and. And me and him had said, you know, if anything happens to you, you can look out for Sam. If anything happens to me, you look out for Sophia and Vincent, right? And we, you know, kept, uh, I keep that to this day, my word with that dude, because I love that dude. For whatever had happened and what he's about, that motherfucker was my dog. And, um, you know, we, we had each other's back. But, but you know, enough with Polly B for No, right that, was, that was great, man. It's 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 just interesting because I love when I have guests that really know me. That know the know. Mm-hmm. And we've got left here. It's like these dudes can cross reference stories of other guys that know us of Polly yeah. of us. That was like that's that's who Bobby is. Bobby right. Bobby's like our bro in San Diego. Right. Anybody says San Diego, the first thing in right. my mind when yeah. I think anything yeah. San Diego. Anything. Like, yeah. Do you know Bobby? It's Bobby. <laughs> You're like, what? Who? <laughs> so, Bobby Tribal, they know about let's stop fucking around. What is it that people don't know about San Diego? Like, what is it that most people don't understand about San Diego? It's our secret, man. Right. Like, come on, man. <laughs> no, Not, no it's park. just us. Benpita. It's just us. <laughs> what? Seriously, because I think... I know, like, a lot of my friends that are from L.A. Yeah. From other places, they love to come down because the vibe is genuinely different. Yeah. I think it's slower. Yep. It's more compact. It's kind of like a big little city. Right. Like, you can get from one end of the city to the other easily in, you know, 35 minutes, 40 right. minutes. Um, you know, it's 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 a gem. You know, it's it's close. It's, it's you know... Even, even you know, going back to what Lucky was saying about the, the scenes that's happening, like in Barrio Logan right now, right. Um, in the car club scene, uh, or car, you know, lowrider scene, or car mm-hmm. culture scene, or whatever you want to call it, even skateboarding, everybody knows everybody else, it seems. Like, if you're connected to something genuinely, somebody knows you, or you know somebody else. It's I think L.A. is, like, way, way bigger. Like, the the vibe here, and people don't really... Crossover, you know, from where you know, from 
Orange County and to LA and to, you know, I, I think it's it's kind of like a big little city. If you're involved in in one of the scenes, one of the you know cultures or lifestyles there, people genuinely you know know each other, especially in what I just mentioned. You know, the, those scenes. Um, it's 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 a different it's a different mentality. I think it's a different lifestyle. It's just uh, from what I've experienced. You know, I, yeah. I I haven't lived in L.A. since I was a little kid. Mm. So um, moving up there, it's just you know it's it's just a different different vibe. I don't yeah. know you know. And then again, you, what people don't know, and I'm sure a lot of people do know what I just said already. You know. But, yeah, because I mean, <laughs> I live in Orange County now, and I've lived in L.A. And Orange County is a slightly different mm-hmm. vibe. Right? Slows down. It slows down a little bit, and you got a little bit more weird Republican shit down here. Yeah. But and then you go from even here to San Diego, and you can feel. That it is, it's it's not a it, it's a metropolis, but it's it's a small big town. Like yeah, you said that's exactly yeah. right. As far as my experiences of San Diego has always been that. Yeah, and there's there is a lot of support for each other in San Diego. Like right. people people genuinely help each other out, and we're supporting each other in different, you know, if it's business or it's you know, socially or whatever it is. There's a lot of you know really really cool people, and there's not a. I don't know. People are cool. People, it's just, it's kind of that vibe. What's, what's going on with tribal right now and the future of tribal? Like what, what, what are you guys focusing COVID on? COVID fucked up a lot of stuff. Right. You know, like we had some really cool plans for, for this summer and for the spring and the summer and, and things going forward. Um, I'm hoping to, to pull a lot of that back together after all this is, has passed. We were, we were planning it. Legacy is a show that, that I did for, for three years. I curated it's a, cultural event you know art skateboarding cars music they're you know some small event well not that small but they're they're events they're, they're right good size so events. does it go down in logan no uh, the last one i did was at the san diego um the broadway pier in san diego see this would be a and great be- type of event that we would be smart to link up when they eventually get going this is a great event that we could even come and do the hard luck show yeah. At the event and have him at the, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I mean, that, w- that would be cool. And if you dope. guys, uh, I mean, uh, we'll talk about it afterwards, but I got, if you guys ever want to do anything in San Diego, I've got a space for you guys. To, oh, I would love to. to, to let's to, do, to, let's to, set it to up. set up there. Hey. Risky just did a thing down there last week. Risk did his, uh, his happy, happy hour. hour. Yeah. So that, That's that great. was, I thought we was going to be like 10, 15 people in the building. We ended up with like 50 people and oh, I was yeah, a little yeah. freaked out afterwards. You know? <laughs> like, damn. Yeah. No, no, and what about um, you were talking about your podcast? What well, is we're, that? we're just about to. Um, we, we're all set up. Everything's ready to go. It's just we've been to the podcast room is is functioning. It's it's all ready to go. It's the lower left podcast. Lower left. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? That's, That's um, a spot. That's yeah. a spot, man. That's yeah. a spot down there. Yeah. If you look at the United States geographically, yeah, continental United States, right. Got it. It's, you know, it's basically Southern California, the most. Lower left part of the the country. And how are you going to do? What's the what's the style of the podcast? Or do you have any? Well, thoughts? we're going to start off with um, the the plan is to start off with an introduction of people in the building. Right. Um, our building, the the lower left building, um, is in the East Village downtown San Diego, and we have a Slappy's Garage, which is a skate shop. We've got a couple tattoo shops in there, actual tattoo shops. Right. Um, we've got a music studio. Like where they record music and do green screen backgrounds and there's a live room and things like that. Right. Everything from hip hop, Latin, rock and roll. They're recording all kinds of stuff there. Yeah. Um, there's some artists that have studios in there. Dies One has his set up there. David DeBaca with Teen Angel. There's a, the Teen Angel headquarters are there. Um, we've got other DJs and we're always fucking with their cars and stuff. So we're going to do an introduction of everything that goes on there in the building by interviewing some of the people that, that work out of there on the daily from are you are you going to be the host i don't know i'll, I'll be that one of like them. a yes i'll be i'll be that one of them like a yes. i'll be in there and then and then we'll do we'll do feature those people and then start to feature people within the network and stories and you know car culture is going to be one thing that that i really enjoy that's kind of always been my shit too right so we'll we'll dive into that and the whole tattoo scene i work with a lot of um really sick badass tattooers from all over the world so we'll, we'll We'll get into that and maybe some, who knows, some politics. Or, yeah. I don't know. Whatever. What, whatever, do you mean whatever, whatever, whatever so politics? So Trump, is he going to get Fuck Bobby Trump. Tribal? Fuck Donald Trump. Is he going to be reelected? Fuck Donald Trump. Is he going to be reelected? You know, 
about it. So <laughs> Donald Duck. So here, here, oh. I, I hate that motherfucker with the passion. Oh, right. I don't think there's been a people, worse. Yeah, people, anyone alive that like I, I hate. There's that. never been a worse human. Yeah, being. yeah, he's a piece Ever. of shit. Right, right. Sadly to say, this is my own perspective. Do it. I think he will, and it's sad that he might. He has a good shot of getting reelected only because of our choices. And, what do you and mean, Joe Biden? You know, it's like uh, he's cool, but I'm not a huge fan. Right. I, I think as Americans, it's like, really, this is the best we could do. Mm-hmm. These two motherfuckers right here. Right. You know, like these are our choices. Right. Um, that's my own personal opinion. Like, sure. I, Joe Biden. Yeah, any, anybody but better Trump. than Donald Trump. Right. Like, I hope Joe Biden does get elected. But he's not and setting the world on fire. No, he, he's not. He's not a good person to represent. Us or a new country. left, yeah, right, right. I mean, because so, because because part of the reason why we have Trump, I think, uh, is because the left kind of got lazy. We kind of were like, you know what? It's you know, equal opportunities kind of okay. We're yeah. all right. We're going to do the center thing, and we're going to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and we're and and we don't have to be afraid anymore of these fringe racists. Like yeah. we don't have to be afraid of that. They're not really doing anything. Meanwhile. They were sitting there building an infrastructure. Right. Right? Fucking Dividing the country. Exactly. And because of that, Trump was able to take advantage of... Ignorant people. Exactly. And wow. as a result, you know, now we're putting up Biden. And so I think it's going to come down to his VP pick. That's the crucial Bobby Trump. Yeah, yeah. Because you're right. Biden's, so what, say it again? A VP pick? His vice, vice presidential president. pick Hard. is going to be the make or break of this situation because Trump's already had a million cuts in him already. Okay. This COVID thing and his response to it. And, um, on top of all of that, I think in the economies in the dumper and all that, right. I think that there's been some cuts put into him that slowed him down a little bit. You're right. There's still a possibility. Yeah. Right. And so Biden doesn't set the world on fire. So now it's like, well, who's his VP pick? Who's he going to pick? It's that pick that could really excite some motherfuckers around here. Yeah. Did you, did you notice how the tone took Trump just recently changed his tone on the whole COVID situation? Yes. Because well, he, he saw that he was losing points and Biden was gaining and right. Trump wasn't taking you know, COVID seriously. And right. now all of a sudden he's, oh, wait, hold on. This he's got the weird. mask on. Yeah. He's well, like, listen, yeah. I'll he's tell you what my person. prediction is, Mr. Tribal, if I may. What's that? This is what I think, and you're absolutely right. I mean, this is what's going to happen. I'm about 75% sure that this is what's really happening. I'll give you a little bit more percentage. Yeah, me too. All right, so this is what I'm going to say. You're right. And when I looked at the states where Donald Trump, because Donald Trump, if you really think about it, the whole thing doesn't really make that much sense. Right. Okay, this would have been an easy, the COVID thing would have been an easy thing for Trump to repair his image on. All he'd have to do is follow some of the guidelines and look like he's doing something. Mm-hmm. And he could do a, like a Bush Jr. 9-11 thing where it's like he wasn't really much of anything. And then there's this crisis. All bets are off. And look, oh. he stands up with a unified voice and knows what to do. But he didn't do that. Right. He didn't do that. You're absolutely right. He made a very confusing reaction. One that was both yes and no. Yes, mask, no mask. We don't know. da 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 the result of which is this weird patchwork of states that are like fucked up and trying to do this other shit or whatever, right? And you say to yourself, God, why would he do that? Because as much as you want to think he's dumb or not, he really knows how to play to, 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 to the press. He really knows how to manipulate his image. He really knows how to do that. He's, and he keeps Fauci on his fucking team. Mm-hmm. Who is the guy that's pro-mask? Who's the guy that's like, hey, let's da-da-da-da-da. And Trump's saying no. And he's got that confusing wedge, mm-hmm. right? And the same people who support Trump hate Fauci, and yet they don't seem to be able to link Fauci to Trump. Like, Trump's the guy who hired him, and he's keeping him in his job. So why, don't, why aren't you complaining? They don't. Right. Okay. So what's going on? How does this make any sense? How is it? Why is it in Florida DeSantis, the governor, and Trump are saying, like, don't worry about masks. Everybody just jump all around and fucking hug each other. Why in certain swing states... Is the governor being kind of encouraged to have like the opposite response to COVID? 
And the reason I think is this. It's because Trump's going to use the medical emergency to delay the election. And this is how it's going to work. He's going to float, which he already just did. By the way, these guys know. I was saying he was going to delay the elections. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. He floats delaying the elections for the mail-in reason, mm-hmm. right? And everyone gets bent out of shape. And they go, what the fuck are you talking about? You did mail-in. There's nothing wrong with mail-in. We're not going to delay any elections for that. So there's going to be major pushback, right, mm-hmm. by everyone that's normal. And that little fight. That fight he's going to use to take some energy and wind out of their sails of battling against it while he's sending his personal federal troops to all these different cities. All right. And then when he and because his policies have increased, especially like in Florida, these medical emergency in key swing states. Florida's always the one that's got a voting problem. Gore fucking blah, blah, blah. Always a voting problem in Florida, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then the medical emergency is going to be so high and Fauci on his team is going to keep pushing for like, hey, we got a problem. And it's it's beyond like what we thought it was going to be. It's the worst it's ever been. Trump's going to relent on the delaying the election for mail-ins and he's going to cave into that and say, okay, maybe not. Then he's going to use the medical reason and say, actually, we've got a medical emergency, though, and this is real. And the data all points to that. And even you liberals, you've been pointing at this data. So we have to delay the elections because people are too sick and we don't have the postal office and the infrastructure right now to handle the election. So I'm declaring a state of emergency based on a medical situation that Trump created. Mm-hmm. He made it worse. And that's how he's going to delay the election. And I've been reading about LBJ, Lyndon B. Johnson, and how elections are really won and shit. There's always some kind of voter fraud in some of these key states. JFK, right? It's rumored that his dad, Joe Kennedy, helped him to win some key districts. It's always like in a one or two districts. So now Trump has these militia that are unmarked, you don't know who they are, and they're in these different districts. And I believe that they are going to help try to steal through stuff in the ballot boxes or miscounting or whatever you want to call it through the confusion of a delayed election. They're going to try to steal a couple of districts that are going to maybe move the needle just slightly in favor of Trump. That's my, that's my prediction. And when the liberals say, hey, you can't delay the elections for these medical problems or this, um, this, this health emergency... Then he's going to come back and say, wait a minute, I kept everything open and the media was criticizing me. I finally listened and I close it all. I close it down. And now you guys want me to open them. I can't win. It's the media. And all of the supporters are going to fucking buy that shit. And that is what's going to happen. That's what he's going to try to do. That's his only shot. You want to know how I know? You know how I know? Yeah, you got know, layers of this. I'm yeah. gonna tell you, like I like like I I don't know politics too well, but I do know the two names that I just heard him mention. Three names was Lyndon Johnson and JFK. Now, if he's mentioning some shit like that, I researched some shit about Lyndon Johnson. Yeah. And this is kind of like like Trump and Lyndon Johnson. They kind of like... There is a some Yeah, they, there is. Because I fucking did some research about that fucking Lyndon Johnson shit. Yeah. And Lyndon Johnson, man, he was a fucking... Like, I don't want to talk shit. But he was Do doing, it. He was doing some illegal shit. Why didn't stop he, now? Didn't Lyndon B. Johnson f- f- found was, the CIA? Hey, no, uh, I don't. No. I don't. He didn't. No, find, but he, he found was, the CIA. Listen, the, who, no, listen. What ended up happening was the, the, this cat was from. He was a Texan, wasn't he? He Johnson? was a Texan. And he and. owned. They they were all about their money. They didn't give a fuck who was in office. If you were fucking with that money in Texas. And a lot of that politics, I know about this shit, man. Yeah. Because I had to study that shit on a research paper, you know, and yeah. I had to do a RJFK type of assassination. Doctor Lepke. Right, and yeah. it happened to where like I I investigated. And I'm like, fuck, man, we're in trouble. We're in America as, as Americans, we are fucking in trouble, bro. Right. We're in a time right now where where I have to wake up in the morning and my first prayer out of my mouth is that I I, I pray that I don't catch the flu. Right. A healthy motherfucker like me. Like, I'm, I'm like, I got to pray. I pray that I don't eat no sugar today. I pray that I just keep <laughs> oh, my... Oh, I was thinking of Jay Edgar Hoover. Right. right. No. Not our FBI. I'm but sorry. listen, Lepke, let me bring him back for a second. Right. Okay. So the point is, is that that's what I think Trump is going to try to do. I don't know if he's going to be able to carry it out. Johnson. The only thing that we have, I think, that we've got to rethink and we've got to wake everybody up. And I think we got a good start with Obama's eulogy at the John Lewis... Funeral. If you get a chance to watch that eulogy, 
It was fantastic because he used Obama, who is like, you know, one of the greatest presidents we've ever had. And listen, American presidents are never going to be perfect. Why? Because they got to do some of that business shit. And you know what? We don't really know what the world is really up to. Right. So you're not going to get some guy that's going to come in and just turn everything communist in two seconds. It's because this these guys are they're they're operators. But Obama, right, is saying the work of freedom is not finished. It's not finished. It's there's more to do. And we got to get together and start putting that to work. We can't. We've been complacent for far too long. You know, we've. We've, you know, I was thinking about this the other night, guys. I was like, man, you know, the way racism was back in the day, uh, not back in the day, but I mean, before Trump, you kind of thought of racism as kind of like, at least I did. It was sort of like maybe some people still held some stereotypes, either consciously, but mostly unconsciously. They weren't thinking and they thought like, oh, well, yeah, of course, black people dance better, this or that. And it was that kind of uncomfortable thing. Right. Yeah. Right. And maybe some, you know, untoward jokes a little bit. But it wasn't like like it was as if the Confederacy who really were going to shed blood to keep black people in slaves and to keep Latinos off the fucking out of the country and all this shit. Right. That were serious about it. Right. That were worried about having children that were of mixed race, that kind of racism. You kind of thought like that was done. Maybe there's like. A small percentage of weird elite white people and really weird, like, off-the-grid militia types that kind of still believe that. But for the majority, it's, you know, inappropriate jokes, some unconscious, you know, prejudices that aren't coming through or whatever. And that's sort of where everyone thought it was. And I think that's why we were complacent because it Mm -hmm. was like, well, wait a minute. Hip-hop's big. We got streetwear out there. We've got... Obama right. uh, So, obviously... (laughs) And the ugly truth is, the real ugly truth is, is that that type of low down fucking 1800s racism was growing and it was growing in the dark and it was spreading while at the same time, our average citizen was going to a school that wasn't really being taught about all those things. You have those two things and it put us asleep at the switch. We weren't we, we, we didn't realize that we had to be vigilant. Because it seems like from John Lewis and what MLK did, we've actually maybe taken a couple steps back from where we were at then. Because I'm reading the LBJ. But I think that people got want? got uh, lazy and people got uh, preoccupied. Oh, people absolutely. Got selfish. People absolutely. People stop thinking with their feet up. Well, this is the problem. What are you reading? It became about themselves and not about the people. Right. It became about individualists. Well, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you. I think you're 100% correct. Mm-hmm. And, and part of that comes from there was a concerted effort in the 80s, a concerted effort to really divide up and to put and disrupt greed. disrupt the community. Absolutely. Disrupt the community mm-hmm. and then reaffirm that individual greed's a good thing, starting with that movie Wall Street. Right. Right. right, right Gordon right. Gecko. Disempower yeah. people. Right. 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 Yeah. The book that Segregate I'm reading. Segregate them. Yeah, the, the book that I'm reading is, is called uh, <clears throat> Lyndon B. Johnson, right? right? Uh-huh. Master of the Senate. By Robert Carroll. Fantastic book. Because, dude, this book is so amazing. Because is it I, out right now? Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's like one of the canons. If you really want to understand the 1960s and 70s right, and civil right, rights. Right. I got to read that. Right? You, gotta, you, mm-hmm. you read this book and you get a real. There's a couple of things that are really great to take away. Uh-huh. One is, is that you kind of get it back. He shows you how Lyndon Johnson learned how to master the Senate. And right. you got to understand, too, it gives you a better understanding of civil rights because civil rights legislation had been pushed for, like, decades, decades. And there's these southern senators, right, of Georgia yeah. and fucking Alabama. Virginia and Alabama, right, right? Right, right? One of which is Dick Russell, right? And Dick Russell was that type of southern senator that was the dignified one. Right. You got that. There's a stereotype of a Southerner, of the dignified Southerner who's like, well, you know, I believe that we shared blah, blah, blah. And it's all. But really, underneath all that is his attempt to put a human face, a dignified face on racism. Really? I mean, you look in the 1960s, 1965 and all that stuff and you see like 
things written outwardly called the Southern Manifesto that was signed by Harry Byrd, right, who, right, who, right, who, right, who is right. a senator also, when, when that, the Brown v. Board, edu- like mixing white children and black children in the same school, these guys openly would say, and they weren't hiding it. They're like, you don't want some big buck, and that's the word they used, African American, they didn't use that word, but I'm using it, right. to be mixing with our white girls because then you were going to have a bunch of mixed breed babies. And that's going to destroy the South. And they were serious. They weren't like, well, they that wasn't them. just like a joke. That was like, that we can't have that. And that, this is the part that I don't think people, I was telling my wife, I had her in a headlock because she wanted me to shut the fuck up. I was like, no, no, no you're no. going to listen to this whole thing. <laughs> you're right. I said, right. The, the thing about these racist right. people, and I'm not even going to just say white, all right? I'm right. just going to say racist people. These racist people believe that everyone secretly is also racist. That's fucked up. They really think that. And they really think that they're fighting for something that a lot of people who are, have been bullied into right. being accepting of other races, that if you were to look deep enough in their hearts, they want to be racist too. They think right. that what they're advancing is an agenda that is what everyone truly believes, but they've been forced to act like they don't. So you're saying the white man, it just ain't the white man that's racist. Yeah, I mean, that's no, no. true. Right. right. That's true. But what I'm right. saying is, is that these folks are on a cause where they really think everyone else believes the same thing that they do. Right. So when they hear opposition to that, they don't take it seriously. And so when you, you read this, you, you start to see that. This, this civil rights stuff has been coming, and the southern states and the senators have been stopping it. And the thing that made civil rights finally go forward mm-hmm. was Lyndon B. Johnson, I'm getting who, that book. Right who was up. against it the right. whole time. Because, really? Because he was voting with the southerners, and Texas is a southern state, even though it's kind of western, too. So what are you saying Hold he was on. against Hold on. I'm finishing. It. I need to hear. Okay. But he also wanted to be president. And he finally got the message and that these Southern senators didn't fully understand is that you, no president is going to be elected. He didn't win the presidency. Listen, did he? God right, go, damn go, it. Go, 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 go. I hope you're not like this in classes. Oh, sure. All right. <laughs> or maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but he was told finally by the political operators right. that if you align with the Southern against civil rights, right. you'll never eventually become president. The president has to be more liberal than that. I hear you. And so when, when, when Lyndon Johnson finally got that, he turned on a dime. I mean, it was like night and day. But on Wednesday, he was like, civil rights is going to destroy this country. Someone's like, hey, if you keep that up, you're never going to become president because you got to get all the northern states to vote for you too. And then Lyndon Johnson turned around and said, Dummy. God damn it. Every yeah. time a colored person is, is hurt in the South, it hurts me too. You know, like, like that. And the way he was able to advance the civil rights, which had heretofore been blocked by the southern states, was that he was able to get the western states who wanted a dam, a federal dam, built in Hell's Canyon, and they had been getting voted down. He told the south, he goes, look, Lyndon Johnson, and we're talking a real political guy on many phones, steak dinners, smoking cigarettes, like you're all that shit, right? Like Mad Men, right? Like everyone in headlock, everyone's drunk, everyone's fucking right, right. prostitutes. Talking to all of them, and he tells the South, he goes, "Look, if you vote for the federal dam for these Western states, they will support you in civil rights legislation because they're, that civil rights legislation eventually is going to be voted on, and you could either do this, you could either." Pass the civil rights that's watered down, that you control a little bit, or you can have the North ram it down your throat. Which way do you want to go? Because you, you might have a worse one. So he was able to make a deal. That's not me. That's all right. He was able to make a deal between the Western states and the Southern states. Southern states let the West have a dam, and the, the West voted with the South to allow a watered down civil rights bill. And although it finally passed, and although a lot of African-American people and a lot of liberals felt like it didn't go far enough, it actually was the final first crack into allowing voting rights and everything else for African-Americans that subsequently followed later, and eventually he signed into law as the president when he was VP to JFK, and JFK was killed. So my point is, civil rights advanced on a pure political fucking swap and trade deal. Right. Now, <laughs> that's good. That so good. I don't know how I got I like into that. that. <laughs> Bobby. So. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Bobby. <laughs> Wait, what's the show about? Yeah. Yeah. So, Bobby. Uh, whoa. 
Whoa. Whoa. Hey, I guess Chumon had something he wanted to get off his chest today. <laughs> I don't know how yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, you handled it. Yeah, what I want to know was, like, just uh, real quickly, was there, what was going on during all these <laughs> fucking uh, marches and riots? Oh, there was some shit going on. What, 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 in San Diego. Who, whose phone on? is that? That ain't mine. It ain't my sorry, phone. Man, sorry, man. Look, he's like Turn left. He's like lounging. Fucking on fucking his leg. Leg. Spread <laughs> your legs. He's doing a fucking layout on the couch. <laughs> yeah. Centerfold. Centerfold. God. He's I thought it was he's my phone. Fucking, I got Johnny Juice fucking <laughs> yelling at me. He's done with <laughs> the book. I got Johnny fucking Salon. Kyle over here yelling about, oh, Bobby's Johnny over there. Johnny Juice. Johnny Salon. I'm never sitting Fucking bullshit. Hey, don't, don't, hey, listen, don't take any offense, Bobby. We no, we've had, no, we uh, had Mick uh, Jagger on here, and <laughs> fucking Lepke was like having a full conversation yeah, with Johnny. With himself, yeah, man. exactly. Johnny TikTok. So he's over there TikTok yeah, showing Mick Johnny. Jagger. He was showing him Johnny Salami his belt buckle. Johnny's yeah, fucking that's old. Disgusting. Johnny's old lady over here talking about, I don't want to be on the show. <laughs> okay, so um, Bobby Tribal. Yes, the, Sorry, the, Bobby. the riots. Bobby, how big? So, Bobby, you got two boys? And a daughter. And a daughter. Yep. How old's your daughter? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Okay. Yep. And uh, <laughs> and you're married still. So. Thirty-two years. Wow. Damn. What's the secret? I'm only three years in. What's the secret? She's good, man. Like she she she's just she knows how to. You know, you've literally she knows, been she married knows thirty to, years longer than this. Job. She knows right. how to. She knows how to push all the buttons. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like just being together for so long, she knows, and and uh, I respect her. Yeah, you know, and and she shows me respect, and I try to keep a good balance. Right, you know, I think it's it's all give and take, and um, you know, we still have our run ins occasionally. Where do you have you the know, kind of relationship where you guys can have a real knockdown, drag out fight, and be honest, and and still know it's going to be okay? Um, those are far and and you know they they don't happen that often. Right, like, yeah, but right. yeah, you know, you, you you have the little bullshit shit that you throw out there during arguments and stuff but yeah i'm the silent type a lot of times sometimes yeah. i'll i'll we'll get into an argument and uh my best defense is just i don't say shit I just, right I'll just give it a couple of days and it'll go away right. and it always does right. you know because at the end of the day she ain't going nowhere i ain't going nowhere mm. you know right I mean? so and the the kids are are good I'm, right i'm blessed man like more than i always i've just over you know it ain't for me. It's never been like Lucky said too. It's never really. I mean, yeah, I'm I'm comfortable. Like I'm 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 really comfortable, but it's never just been about that. It's never just. I I, I think I've I've reached a point in my life where I think I know when to say when, and I think that's the problem with a lot of people. There's they always strive for for more and more and more and more and more and more and more, and then they they don't know their kids. They don't know their wives. They don't. They can't find happiness or peace or. You know, they don't find that time for themselves or anything that's important. And so I think it's, that's kind of where I'm at with it. You know, it's just, um, she's cool and and everything's, you know, I got zero complaints. Now, do you have, what kind of wife do you, because my wife is, she's an operator, man. My wife fucking, she she makes sure I'm, you know, doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And she don't, is your wife the, the silent, like, no. let you run the show type? Or no, how does that work? not at all. She's... She, she lets me know. She asks questions. She wants to know about this and that. And and but no, she does give me a lot of space to do what I got to do too. Right. Yeah, you know them I mean? wives ask a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I keep them around. Me. Right. <laughs> Somebody. Oh, there, I just seen a stand up. Well, oh, did but... you see that Jerry Seinfeld stand up? Yeah, the newest one. Oh my. Yeah, we was talking about wives. Yes. Damn. No. That is so true. He that was, dude nailed it. He oh, really? nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I gotta see that. He had like some common complaints that wives were saying or whatever. And Where he was it, turning it around it, on it. Turned into like a podium where yeah. you just that's uh, so dude. good. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. but no, she she's she's just great, great cook. She does right. she has her hobbies, she's right. great with the kids, she's you know, she she always, like I said, asks asks the right questions and sometimes she asks questions I don't feel like answering. But you know, it's all she gives me space, and she's always, you know, she's she has an appreciation for what I do. Sean, uh, you so. laughed. Old blue eyes, OBE. Does your wife ask you questions? No, you I was laughing at the uh, Lepke out there shouting and, and hollering <laughs> on the phone. Sorry. Hey, has uh, anybody ever heard Lepke whisper? No, <laughs> no. no. He can't. Uh, whisper, it's physically yeah, impossible yeah. for Lepke to whisper. Yeah. Hey, His hey. vocal cords aren't set up for that. 
You ain't gonna believe this. We never thought it would happen. What do you mean? Bizarro is pulling up in a few minutes. Oh, um, lucky, lucky don't give a fuck. Hey, anyway, Bobby. <laughs> look at my, Bobby. Look, Steve, look, this, hey. this is around the time where Steve's like, I gotta. I gotta, Steve, get, out. Right, I gotta get a coffee. Or... Hey, I'm thinking, hey, you know, I'm just get getting wound up, bro. <laughs> now, you don't even know where <laughs> I'm about. Six fucking copies. No, I mean, it's like 20 copies. I'm not. <laughs> fucking green juice in my fucking system. Uh, you know, yeah, I'm gonna go get like a green. My green juice. Bro, I'm gonna get some green. Problem. I ain't had, I ain't ate all <laughs> day. Punk, okay, no, hey, listen, mm. check this out. Lepke, what do you eat, bro? I be I'm on, I'm on, I alkaline in my body. I get like I, my I body. get some grass fed meat and I fucking like take that meat grass <laughs> right. Listen and I fucking put a bu- uh, like a, 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 like a, I'm doing good, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good, bro. Hey, oh, let me do a reaction. <laughs> Wait, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. What kind of imitation? What kind of answer was it? Listen, bro. Listen, this is what I do. Okay, I take a look at my body is alkaline. I take yeah, a look at grass fed meat and I take a little bit and I press it. And I do it, and I go like, I'm doing good, bro. Yeah. <laughs> right? This was all drunk. The battery acid, oh, no, no. I had car this battery. All I heard, all I heard was hey, grass-fed hey, beef. Hey, hey, I, don't need, I don't need no fucking drugs today, bro. Nobody no, asked. No. They, I didn't ask about that. drugs. Oh, drugs, drugs, good, bro. drugs, kind of drugs were not, not even in the I conversation. I cauliflower, a lot of green. I'm fucking like, hey, man, no sugar. I got there rid of the sugar. I haven't had sugar, diet soda. And let me tell you something. I don't fuck with none of that, uh, 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 you know, like that. Uh, Splenda. That, no, that fast food bullshit. I'm fucking right. no fast mm. food. Yeah. That's why I think we look good today, man. Like yeah. you got, like like the diet that I consume, I fuck with Dr. CB. I look at his shit. Dr. CB, you ever hear him? No. Oh, he's CB? A, yeah, that's the one Nipsey Hussle and them were. Like Nipsey Hussle, a lot of people don't know Nipsey and them, even though he owned the hamburger spot. they. And then I do what Esteban's doing. Right. I'm oh, trying to do that, bro. Vegan? It's right. hard, bro. You know who's a real good vegan right now, too, is OG Abel. How about, oh, is he doing yeah, that? He, Shout out he, to Abel. Abel. Shout out to Franco. That's right. Right. I'm going to give he, my he's boy He's been Franco real healthy, too. Franco's right. on some, like. He's doing, yeah. He, yeah. That Franco told Franco me lost many like 40 pounds. Years. Fucking Franco told me many, many moons ago, Bobby. He, he got at me. He's like, bro, you got to cut out the dairy. Right. That's what's fucking your lower back up. That messes up a lower back? Yeah, he, told, he explained to me. He goes, hey, you cut out the dairy and the fuck, your back will be a lot better. And, you know, I slip up. I have, like, every now and then I'll throw a little butter. <laughs> I don't fuck with no milk. I drink that almond milk unsweetened. No mm-hmm. butter. I don't fuck with butter, organic <laughs> eggs, you know. But here, I don't fuck with butter. No, you can't. That dairy, you know, that cheese and all that. Yeah. Like, like I'll go, like, I, I, I'll go. So what's your vice? My vice, what do you mean? What do I do? I work out. No, I work out. Vice. Do you vice. hear that bullshit? Did you hear that about? He What's tried to slip that he, in there. He was he like, acts I like, might work out too much. What's a vice? A vice? What's your down? What's the you one thing? Oh, my downfall? Yeah. Uh, uh, my downfall would probably what's be. What's the bad thing? I care too what much. What do you do that's no, not, no. not good for you? What's, what I, what Come I, on. What's what's some secret that you're fucking with, Lepke, that we don't it know? It doesn't like, necessarily have to be a secret. No, It could be like. You, yeah, yeah, maybe he's got a, so maybe he's got a, smoke, or smoke, maybe he got like a Snickers bar. Yeah, he's not smoke. telling. No, I haven't smoke. done. What, no. what, what do you? What's oh, your eating kill? the cookie in the middle. Of eating, eating. I like. I had some dark chocolate last night. I woke up in the Ooh, middle of the night and oh, I next some fucking yeah. dark chocolate. <laughs> some bang. Holy oh, God, oh, fuck wow, no bang, man. Dark chocolate because someone told me that. So the homie was like, "Hey, that that shit. Uh, something about the dark chocolate is good for you." Yeah. Yeah. And I haven't been able to eat no fucking candy. So I'm thinking, you know, I'm gonna buy this little dark chocolate thing, do it? put it in the fucking refrigerator, and yeah. But I'm gonna always let you know. Fridays and Saturdays, I kind of come off the grid. I don't so go to Dorito or Snitzel. <laughs> yeah, I don't go to <laughs> Dorito. Wait, what I'm about Dorito? Hey, how about, so I'm in the McDonald's line with Bizarro, and they, all three of them look at me, they go, like, they're going to buy me something, right? And I'm like, there's nothing at McDonald's I could drink but a, a black coffee. Right. They're like, what do you want, bro? What do you want? And it was like late at night, and I'm fucking craving, and I'm like, and I went like, it's dumbass Smitty and Bizarro, they're like, there's like a week before Bizarro. Go I so I, I go, because you know the little cheeseburgers? So they got to <laughs> Double with cheese? Yeah. So I go, give me the little small, and they don't even order it right. So the lady's like, what? Excuse me? Can you repeat that? And they look over, hey, what did it do? I go, never mind, bro. I'm good. I'm like, fuck that. <laughs> so I oh, still God, haven't been. No, like, just I don't want to like, hear. That sounds like some bullshit. Hey, no, listen, I don't want to hear Smitty. Like, it's like, I, I can't even waste he my time. He has a way of, of just kind of working around questions, oh, huh? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Dude, so this is what I'm saying. Tell, 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 so let me, let me right, say, so here, here was the, so you're, just to clarify, 
Your biggest vice right now is eating is in the dark, middle. Is dark eating chocolate. after like Manny. You may, uh, you may have told me don't eat after six o'clock. Dark I, chocolate in the middle of the night. I That's did it your last vice. Night. Yeah, it's the worst it. thing that you wait. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Hold on a second. Hold That's on a second. It. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. What do you think about that, Luck? Look, he's in the back of Lucky's head. He's like, there's got to be more. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Big he's left. Good. He's Big butt left. naked yeah? with oil in the room with Big the door locked. <laughs> Big left. Big <laughs> left. He's butt naked with a... So yeah. That's not a vice. That's exercise. Yeah. But, yeah. No, listen. Oh, somebody told me, hey, hey, that ma- they said, hey, you lose this many calories masturbating. I think I went like five times. This was a while back. <laughs> yeah. They're like, you lose this he's many like, calories. I burned fucking yeah. 700 yeah. Yeah. calories. He's like, dude, I'm not even done yet. No, I got somebody, hey, 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 no. I started cramping up. Hey, hey, somebody... Oh, oh, don't smoking. you know? Yeah, if you masturbate this many times, I got a virus get... in my eyeball. Listen, listen. I went through that. Hey, no, no lie. Hey, in my first the year, internet bill no, was like hey, $2, no, that was the first year of, of clean beings to clean and sober. I went through that phase. That phase, and I'm not there yet. I'm not like I'm at a point in my life where if I get out every night and walk an hour, I did my job. I, I, I'm i noticing that when I walk, you know what I'm talking about, you, Mom. Yeah. When you, the more you walk, yeah. you go a half pet and hiking. And whenever I walk, man, and when I'm done, I feel better. I sleep better. I don't have to take the Unisom. You know what Unisom is? Hey, wait, that wait. That fucking sleeping hey, ate well. Hey, all right. So, so take us through this. Actually, you know, Bobby, man, he's a genius. No wonder why his clothing brand right, is so fucking right, huge. Right, the right. guy knows where to fucking put his finger. So what do you do, dude? You you're at what time at night uh-huh. do you wake up to be like I got to like what happens? It's tell like, me. I'm not going to lie, bro. Like 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 and, and I'm going to tell you, man. Do if it. I, go right when to I it. wake up like I try to go to sleep. I drink some green juice, I try to put some water. <laughs> so that way I I And you lay in the bed. But I usually wake up like not distressed or nothing. Yeah, what do you mean lay in the bed? I I'm fall asking asleep. You, you go I to put sleep. the fucking YouTube on. I get yeah. a Buddha or some go bullshit. Ahead. Go ahead. Like the 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 laws of whatever, you know, they got something a lot of calming. Yeah, calm and I, I knock out, bro. And right. I and then right when I open my eyes, I wide awake again. I need some fucking an organic peanut butter <laughs> with a shot of jelly. <laughs> he I just some organic. You see, he just jelly. added some shit. No, hey, no, 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 Wait. So wait, wait, wait. Shh. Okay, Talk and then body, and body. then you wake up out of a dead sleep. Oh wait, right. you gotta get the shoes. You wake up out of a dead sleep, and you you have to ingest some kind of calories. You know what? Hey, like I'm not gonna lie. Last year yeah. I fucking went down, Bobby, from two to from two eighty something. Yeah. And I fucking was under two. I got under two seventy by not eating at night. Now if I want to feel comfortable and get under two seventy. Yeah. Then I can't eat in the middle of the night. That's but would my you vice. Wake up and that is like, a vice for me. Listen, when you get nutter up, bars. Now, are you wearing a robe or you just go down in your chonies? Bro, I fucking this is how I, well, I sleep like this, bro. I, with, minus the shoes. Yeah, them, them <laughs> shoes I mean, are badass, bro. What kind of shoes up. are you wearing, bro? I got these uh, cement red. Uh, you know, shout out to Baldacci, man. We, you know, you know Florence and and Harpies and my neighborhood rebels. We 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 fly red, man. Before the North and the South thing went in effect, this is our color, man. Motherfuckers be like, why you wear that? My girl sometimes tell me, Maddie, shout out to Sweet. She tells me, hey, you know what? You got that red shirt on, that red shorts. You know, you, you got you got to go change. I'm like, what the fuck is everybody like? Red that. Like, People hate red. I love red. I like the red. Mafia people don't like red either. Okay. They don't like mustaches, beards, and they you can't be flossed up in red, man. I read plenty of mafia books. One of those books, Lucky shot me on the yard. Yeah. You know, Lucky had a fucking library of mafia books, man. It was like, like if you wanted a mafia book, you go see Big Lucky, man. Right. <laughs> right. So, Serious. See, Lucky has I Joe, Joe, Joe New, Dog. When we was in New York. We went to New York. Right. What, like nineties? Yeah. Did he take you on a tour? That. He did. He he. We were walking oh, yeah. in Little Italy, oh. and he was pointing out little fucking apartments and balconies. Wow. <laughs> little yeah, storefronts and shit. Lounge. And it was like right, 3 right. in the morning. Sparks. And you're you're breaking it down. Like, this is right. where this happened. Right. This, is where this, this is where these dudes You know all that look? Yeah. Yeah. Humberto's Actually, do you know, yeah. Is that you know a Mulberry? Rick Steves. Yeah. Rick, Steves Mulberry, Rick Steves. Hey, Rick Steves, Rick Steves Travel Company is putting together the Steve Lucky Luciano walking you tour of them. New York. 
Yeah, that'd be great. And, no, remember we were going to do the fucking... Strombolis. Yeah, yeah, another thing. The the tour, gang experience? Where, yeah, the gang experience where you, right. yeah, what do you, you think get about, on the bus, yeah. and we take you and, and, and the like, the drive-by shooting happens at the bus. Right, right, right. They jump in a couple people. Like, you get <laughs> right. yeah, yeah. And at the end of it, we sell you a shirt that's like, I survived. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I survived the ghetto tour. Hey, right. another yeah. thing Bobby didn't mention that what? they have in San Diego. They got a fucking little Italy, bro. Do they? Yeah, they do. Yeah. Walk town, right? Yeah, that's they got nice. a little Italy. Yeah, that's the neighborhood. That's yeah. They, we don't have that in fucking L.A., do we? a nice no. little Italy. What's the... Hey, Steve, what is the Italian part of L.A., really? There is none. We have none, bro. But we you got know got a, We got a Japanese place. We got, we got a Thai we town, have, Filipino but, town. But we don't have a WAP town out here. And that's crazy. That's that's kind of odd. Not right? Yeah. You remember that trip to New York? Oh, Lucky? I do. I do. We had that trip to New you York. You don't remember. And, yeah, we are eating strambly pizza. I had gone down into the... Uh, I got Esteban with me. I've got Carl, Carl, Bobby, and we're all in New York together. Yeah. There's some pictures too. Yeah, he's got. Some, I think you have. I do. I sent yeah. you one. Yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah. So we're. In, why don't we put that up on? Well, the listen, thing. we're going to. So we're at this. We're all in New York together, and I'm. I think I'm trying to like hide the fact, because I'm on. I think I wasn't even out that long. I think it was no. still even on parole. I got a pass to go to New York. And I'm like, as soon as I get to New York, yeah. I'm getting some white dope. Yeah. You know? I'm yeah. going to get my, I want that, I miss that, that East Coast hair, right? That right. white dope. Right. We get out there. And I'm like, I like to tell Esteban, oh, yeah, I'm going to go uh, for a walk or something like that. He's like, all right. And fucking, I go cop, you know, and I've got it. But. I get down, but I'm like, I really can't shoot the dope, man. Like, there's no one really to fix. Or I think we're at Lisa Cooper's or something. I'm like, so I'm just going to have to snort shit. So I'm out. We hook up with Bobby and Carl, right? And yeah. we're going out. And so, like, I'm ducking out. I've already started snorting this, this hair on, right? Oh, yeah. New York. yeah. I'm doing it. And so we're all together, but, like, in between sentences and why we're talking and shit, I'm completely nodding out. Yeah. I'm falling asleep in the middle of, like, sentences, right? And everybody's like, and I'm trying to act like I'm really not, but Bobby knew what was up, dude. And we're getting, like, pizza, and I'm like, my eyes are closed, so I'm like, I got video oh, of shit. Scrambly. I'm like, it, it was fucking yeah. funny, bro. He has all these pictures. I of got pictures like, and videos of all that shit. <laughs> Eating fucking big old fucking piece of pizza, and you couldn't, you wouldn't stop talking about Stromboli's. Yeah, and then yeah, we'd go into a deli, and just to watch you order <laughs> a sandwich, <laughs> took him like twenty minutes. <laughs> uh, we were having fucking fun in New York. Then we went out to like Bronx or somewhere. And we went to the uh, the Hall of Fame, the Graffiti Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah we went yeah. to the Bronx. Is that the mm -hmm. time we were with the dudes from Tats Crew in the back of the van? I don't. I think so. Yeah, that was that was a good trip, man. That was fun, man. Yeah, we had a lot of we had a lot of fun. So, man, listen, Bobby, can you give us a quick little, just as we wrap some things up, Bob? Tell me what what's going on with tribal? Where's tribal at? Where can people find? Tribal yeah, how clothing? can people buy, yeah. pay, yeah, do whatever? Give us a hook up yeah, best best. Um, f first first part of the question: What's going on with us? Is we're just continually just evolving moving along um adding new graphics new pieces new clothing um, oh don't do a lot of uh very selective with the collabos that we do right uh -huh. um we we i usually try to you know artist collabs we've done since day one uh -huh. like that's always something that we've been into and our whole brand has been around artist collabos but collabing with other brands um or other <laughs> you know whoever it is i'm real careful like that i i take a lot of pride in being able to stand on our own two feet so to speak sure, sure. but there's also um what we what we're doing now is just uh evolving and changing and trying to do cool new shit like we always have right right um in regards to you know the future i've got um my kids are involved with the business both my boys um i've got a really good crew right now an amazing crew i think it's i mean Probably one of the best crews I've ever had. As far as guys on the daily and people putting in work, we're really focused. Um, I've got really good management people in place, and just everything looks good right now. You know, COVID fucked some things up. Like I said, we had some really cool events, some shows. We were getting ready to do a, a big event at the Mayfair mm -hmm. that Risky was involved with as mm -hmm. well. 
uh, cars and art and music and stuff like that and a, and a couple other gallery shows and, and events that, that we are working on that we hope to bring back into um, – put back into <laughs> – Put back into play. Yeah, put back into play after after hey, COVID. Hey, Bobby. But um, um, so hey, we brought in a model. We brought in a model uh, we thought might be good uh, proponent <laughs> for tribal clothing. Right on. Uh, his name is Bizarro. Right he on. is okay. the twin brother of Schmitty. I don't know if you've ever listened to the show. Schmitty, the guy who who wiped his ass with a dirt clot. This is his twin brother. <laughs> I'm the uncircumcised one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Is, is there nice any place you. in the uh, in the uh, tribal organization wow. for Bizarro? I think it, there'd be a good spot as the as the assistant to the assistant VP of marketing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the assistant VP of marketing? Dude, wh- while yeah. you're yeah, exactly, <laughs> Big Lep. That is Big Lep's driver. Yeah. Bizarro is Big Left's driver. Right. Um, all right. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. So, Bob, uh, is it at Tribal Gear? Oh, yeah. Uh, tribalgear.com. Tribalgear.com. Or tribalgear.com is a good place to, to get it. Um, also, at the lower left in San Diego, we're on 17th and Island. Yeah. Um, shout out to everybody out down there and in the building. Shout out to, of course, Stevon Cartoon, all the Soul Assassins, Bobby. Um, Everybody, sand mugs, all the soul assassins, everybody that's that supported the brand, big risky. Mm-hmm. Um, it was great seeing you guys. You know, yeah, man, lucky, it's and, good, lucky it's great to shit. have you down. Lucky, hey, lucky. it's great to have you down. And nice meeting you guys. Nice also. meeting you. Yeah. I would love, love Bobby. I would you guys love to come for down. you to. Yeah, yeah I want to figure out how we come down there. Let's do a San Diego yeah, show. Do a San man. Diego show. Yeah. And and yeah, and there's some good people down there we could have on. We yeah. do a little round table in San yep. Diego. I've got I've got and I can help you put some people together too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd let's be do really it. good. Yeah. And, then and Bobby, that night stalker episode, the two episodes you yeah. guys did, that was badass. Well, you you guys that was good. I really enjoyed that. Bobby, did so you? Here, Hell well, yeah, yeah. Here's my here's my, my deal with you, Bobby, is I want you to like every couple months feel free to say Lux. I need to break away for a Saturday. I want to come up. And you're always going to have a seat right here on the I show. I appreciate that. I come you. up yeah. anytime you. and you want to plug, promote. You got something going on. You come right up here, man. I appreciate that, brother. Show, bro, Thank you. Use this platform. Thank you. I love you, brother. Yeah. Love you too, Ums. And you are I the homie too, dog. Tribal gear. Ladies and gentlemen, we brought it to you. Right. Bobby Tribal. Founder, owner, and just a, a San great, Diego's great finest. motherfucker. Good, yeah, San Diego's <laughs> fine. It's a good motherfucker, man. Great to have you on the yeah, show. Thank, thank you. you. Love you, Lux. Thank, thank you, thank brother. brother. Thank you. Well, like I, we do have about this time, we say adios. Adios. adios.